All right. We're live. is working yep and this yep okay all right i think i figured out the issues i was having with that last time hey boys good to see you too all right So I had a nice little trip down to Southern California over the past week or so. So that's why I've been, I haven't been streaming for the last week, week plus, because I've been out of town. And even though I do have the equipment now to, uh, to stream off site, uh, I, I didn't want to bother doing that. <laughs> so I just didn't stream for like nine days. That's how we'll do it. All right. I to, actually, I need to make sure Peepo is working. Very important. Uh, let's see. Show stats. Okay. Show current. There we go. All right. Peepo is fully online and operational today. Microsoft has not broken... The speech API lately. For once. Alright. So yeah, for... Uh... So let's see. Things uh, things that have happened since I last streamed. So my... I, I sold my, my large CRT I was using. Um, the 20-inch one. Uh, that one I realized after a lot of thinking that I, I didn't actually need it. So I ended up just selling that to um, to a buyer in SoCal for kind of a lot of money. But then again, I paid a lot of money for it when I got it. So, you know, it evened out. Uh, and I kept the 14-inch um, the version of it that I'm currently using. Uh, so it's, it's like that big. The size that I'm currently using is the size of the screen. And the other one was like that big. And the distance, or the the amount of price difference between going from 14 to 20, is like almost quadruple the price. <laughs> it's crazy for this thing. Um, but but luckily for me, I don't have to mess around with moving around a, a hundred pound CRT anymore. So my back, my back is thanking me for it. I did have to haul that down to SoCal though, and that was a pain in the ass. And then. Uh, during the process of that, um, I brought my PS1 and my PSIO down to SoCal to demo the TV for the guy who's buying it. And it worked fine when I was down there. So I packed it up and, and put it in my crate. And then it just, it just sat in this crate all week while I was on vacation. And then I brought it back here and unpacked it for, um, like I was planning on streaming last night too. But I, I unpacked everything. I hooked up the PlayStation, the PSIO. I turn it on and it goes to the PlayStation BIOS, which it's not supposed to do if you have a PSIO hooked up to it. Um, so the, the cartridge wasn't working. So, so I thought, oh shit, it, is it broken again? And I got out the other PSIO cartridge that I have, plugged that one in. That one didn't work either. So I spent about six hours over yesterday and today um, opening up the PlayStation uh, Resoldering all the connections on the motherboard, taking out the other modifications that I did to it, none of it worked. 
I cannot get those two PSIO cartridges to work. So, um, so for now, until I, I get another set of PlayStation 1s, um, I'm just going to have to go back to using the PS1 and, and discs again, which is a huge pain in the ass because I paid... Uh, it's like for a shipped PSIO from Stone Age Gamer, it's like $140. And I have two of them because I thought the first one that I had was broken. So I have nearly $300 worth of PSIOs that are currently inoperable. Uh, that that I, I can't really do anything with them right now. And like, even, even if I was just gonna say, okay, fuck it, I'll just sell them and get rid of them. There's DRM on the cartridges that makes it an extra pain in the ass to sell on, on third party, uh, third person markets. So just, just, so just don't bother with PSIOs. If, if you're ever thinking about getting one and getting it installed, just, just fucking don't. <laughs> Spend that $140 on um, on a bunch of CDRs and a $5 mod chip, and you'll be so much better off than having to deal with all the bullshit that a, a PSIO entails. Oh, boy. So, yeah, that, that, that has been my excitement in the last, uh, last two days with all that. I'm, I'm still going to have to try and get them up and running again, because what else am I going to do with them? Like, they, they don't work as doorstops. <laughs> so, shit. I guess I got to try and fix them, right? All right. <clears throat> hey, Sekolan. Hey, Ivy. Hey, Gator. Hey, Leet. Hey, Shio. Welcome, Zach. Catching the XFL, I don't watch football at all. I stopped watching football a little while ago, so no. And I'm especially not going to watch the XFL, because, come on, why would you? Um, a good price for one of those, for the 20-inch or the 14? Because the 20-inch the BVMs... Um, like I sold mine locally for a thousand. Um, I know that there's some on eBay for like thirteen hundred to fourteen hundred, but if you look at those, most of those are from the same seller, and that same seller, uh, it appears they're they're doing some funny business with the um, firmware of their TV to make it look like it's a better TV than it really is. Um, like they'll they'll show a uh, a photo of the back of the TV that has a serial number on it. And then they'll show a, a picture of the uh, menu screen on the TV. Like here, let me, let me illustrate this here. Um, and why I think they are being super shady about it. So on the back of the TV, there is a serial number. And then on the TV itself, this is the, the 14 inch model that I have now. Um, in here, in status, is it in status? I can't. There, right here. Um, so you got the serial number, like there, there's my serial number, and then the firmware version down here, and then it says I got 72,555 hours of operation time on here. Um, the, the eBay sellers would say like, oh man, we got five hours of operation time on this. This thing's practically brand new. And then their, their serial number in the menu here will be like 69420. And it won't match the number on the back of the TV. Um, and that's why they're... Like, it, unless you know these TVs and have one and have experience with them, you'd never know to check that. Um... But it's it's so fucking obvious, like, looking at the pictures, like, yo, your serial number does not match what it says on the TV and on the menu, and you're, you're trying to upsell this as, like, a brand new, pristine, straight out of the crate um, TV. Like, the listings might even still be up there on, on eBay um, if you search for a BVM, BVM20. Um... And, and yeah, so I, I think the guys, the, the guy on eBay is just trying to drive up the prices. <clears throat> and then he's also charging like $500 for shipping or some, some bullshit number like that. So he's got, got quite a racket and, and looking at the, the sold listings, people are actually buying them too. And that's, that's the crazy part. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't want to go through that with mine. So I just went, yo, local pickup only. I'll demo it for you. 
Uh, and I made sure that mine at least went for a reasonable price for, for both me and the buyer. And it went to a good home. It went to a, uh, a guy who works in the game industry. So he's uh, he's got a TV for when he's done done working and just got time to play through classic games. Um, and let's see. Uh, yeah, they are that much now. Um, like my my 14 inch, uh, I paid 200 ish for mine for my my kind of busted tw uh, 14 inch one. And I think now on the secondary market, they go for, I think at least 400 now. Uh, I won't say how much I paid for my 20 when I originally got it. <laughs> I, I, I paid less than what I sold it for, but not by much. Um, and I sold it for a thousand. So yeah, they, they do go for a lot. And like, and the crazy thing is, is that for a period of time, um, you could get these for like twenty dollars on Craigslist in Southern California, just from just from places uh, around the LA area, just dumping these things, like TV stations and, and institutions dumping their old BDMs because they upgraded to LCD or something. And yeah, sure, they're just like, yeah, come take it. It's practically yours for free. <laughs> so that that's why some of these guys just have stacks and stacks of these super rare broadcast TVs. Um, that they're now making a complete killing off of now that they're super rare and people know that they're great for, uh, for classic gaming. All right, but enough about that. Let's, uh, let's get into what we're doing tonight. All right, so the plan for tonight is, uh, we're going to play Machine Head for a while, probably two to three hours, and then I'm going to switch over to, um, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. That's one of my backlog games that I, uh, um, but meaning to play for a while. Um, I couldn't decide which uh, which backlog game or which SNES game I wanted to do for the backlog. So I, I had a set of four that I had in the front of my mind. I just put it into a random number thing. And this is the one that came up. So that's why we're doing these at uh, a little bit out of order. You remember seeing them for like 80 but never got one? Well, the, the ones that were 80 were likely PVMs and not BVMs. There is a very big difference. <laughs> the the PVMs, yes, you can get those for for like eighty, um, even nowadays. But the BVMs are the are the the crazy ones, um, and those are the ones that I got. Those are the ones that have a premium attached to them. All right, Machine Head, PS One, nineteen ninety six FPS, developed by Core Design. This is the Tomb Raider Studio, published by IDOS. Uh, Pierce Explosion number 202, the first time we're playing it. And here it is. Oh. All right, so we got... Uh... Sure. Sure. They knew exactly what they were doing making this cover. Exactly what they were doing. All right, T14... Um, for a 96 game to, to be this style of ESRB rating, that's that's kind of crazy. This must be a late 96 game. Um, yeah, okay. The world is infected with the deadly man-made virus. Guess who is the cure? I, I don't know. I, is it us? In the near future, an experiment in nanotechnology has gone horribly wrong, and a bioengineered virus threatens to take over the world. You are selected to pirate through 15 levels of twisted, putrefied mutants in an effort to cleanse the planet of the rapidly reproducing virus. Oh, and by the way, you have a bomb strapped to your body that has a short fuse? What? What? Why? What? Okay. Uh, it's a desperate race against time as you deploy flamethrowers, disruptors, and homing missiles to wipe out the virus before the world is mutated forever. There's probably a... a a lower reason why we have a bomb strapped to us as well, but all right, I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> all right, features fully SGI rendered 3D virtual landscapes with it with 360 degree mapping terrain. Take on warped armies of dog bats, <laughs> giant spiders, grinning zombie clowns, and dozens of terrifying mutations. Zombie clowns probably also probably one of the check check boxes we should have for peace explosion, but we'll just make a note of that for this. 
15 adrenaline pumping missions, gear up with chain guns, photons, IO storms, and enough firepower to toast the mutant horde. Race the clock, you're strapped to a bomb that's ready to give you a one-way ticket to kingdom come. I... Uh, okay. Sure. So this is... I I, I classified this as a first-person shooter. Um, it, It's like a first-person tank game kind of but it is a first person perspective and we're shooting things therefore a first person shooter <laughs> sure uh and yep that that certainly looks like an fps game to me so we're just gonna have these giant gun things in our our f of at all times i guess um all right one player and then right here this says just memory card it doesn't it Usually it says like memory card one slot or memory card one to 15 slots. This just says memory card. So maybe this is one of those games that takes up literally the whole memory card to save. I, I hope not, but I'm I'm prepared if that is the case. So we'll see, I guess. Uh, T for teen, animated blood, animated violence, suggestive themes. All right. Here's what the disc looks like. It's a... Uh, that is a pretty low effort disc, not gonna lie. And then we got this incredible advertisement for it. All right, Blam Machine Head. And this is just gonna haunt your nightmares forever. <laughs> All right. See through the eyes of Dr. Kimberly Stride as you ride the Vorpal Blade through an insane combination of shoot 'em up action, strategic objectives, and B movie melodrama. Gasp. With amazement at the state-of-the-art virtual landscapes, tunnel systems, and eye-popping FMV, laugh in the face of danger as you blast through 15 adrenaline-popping stages of sheer 3D exhilaration, scream with terror at horrific swords of mutated polygonal enemies, beg for mercy as you face Machine Head in the mother of all showdowns, play, blam, dash, Machine Head for the ride of your life. All right, just had to get the thumbnail there. Perfect. All right. What we got here? Land Machine Head, Core Design Limited, and Derby. Okay, so we got some some actually different shots than the the back of the box showed. Actually, that one that one is on the back of the box. There's a truck. All right. Available on PC, CD-ROM, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation. Uh, and we're actually going to kind of see the Saturn version in a, in a second here because I couldn't find the PlayStation manual for this. So <laughs> here's the here's the Saturn manual and this will have to do instead. Uh, yeah, the, the name of the game is actually Blam Machine Head is the actual title of the game. Um for whatever reason, just the PlayStation version and just the North American version, it is Machine Head. Everything else, blam, Machine Head is the title. All right, Sega Saturn, yep, yep, yep. Controls, so discard all this Saturn stuff. Because uh, the controls are completely different. Uh, and of course, my my note viewer thing is not keeping up and up. I'm still unsure why it does this. I'm, I'm gonna have to switch this up for next time. All right, but let's let's not worry about the manual then. Too much here. Uh, start game options, in-game display. All right, in-game display, computer display, sensor, homing weapons, energy readout. You're strapped to a cruise missile. Cruise missiles develop detonate on impact. Uh Okay, if if your energy drops below 20, you'll activate the bomb timer. Okay. So this this is the important thing here. All right. So according to the manual here, if our health gets below 20%, it'll start the bomb that's strapped to us for whatever reason. I I'm sure there's lore reasons for this. Don't worry about not being able to see this on screen. Let's see if I can get it to update on here. There we go. All right, bomb timer. 
The only way to prevent being vaporized is to supplement your power bar. Uh, enemies contain energy as these specific map areas. Clock will stop upon energy restoration and will slowly increase to full time. All right, so that's going to be a thing. Unreality keys, yep. Real world keys, sure. All right. Okay, unreality keys. Uh, access and repair these features. Unreality. Repairing the bridge, accessing your area. So you have to use the key in the correct number terminal for the key. Sure. All right. The pause screen has the the map, and that's fine. Chain gun has unlimited ammo. There's a bunch of other things. There's up to five unreality keys in a level, up to five real keys in a level, and then it just straight up tells you what each mission is, and then there's a walkthrough for level one, and that's it. That's that's the whole manual. Okay. All right. Very exciting. Let's uh, let's get to it and see how bad this game really is. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Now we gotta... I gotta turn on this. I forgot to do this before the stream started. Whoops. And then turn on this. That. Okay. Alright. Okay. All right, so because we're using the the regular PlayStation again for this, we get the glorious startup sound that I currently cannot hear. And y'all cannot see because... There we go. Okay. Left channel only for some reason. Why is this left channel only? <laughs> uh Why is this only the left channel? Nanotechnological microbes, microscopic machines with the capacity to reproduce at a truly astonishing rate. Their origin is unknown, but they are man-made. The machine head virus is, this... is not indestructible. It can be destroyed. The evacuation of Montreal, Canada, earlier this year. Why is this only the left channel? Even through Toslink, it's only the left channel. What? A concern which must be shared by everyone on the planet. Okay, maybe in the game it's. Uh, sure. My name is Kimberly Stride, Dr. Kimberly Stride. I've been engaged in research at MIT into the cause and effects of nanotechnological infestation when the virus struck. My assistant, Orville McArdle, Orville the Geek, and I found refuge in the isolation bunker deep beneath the Institute and set about discovering the ways and means necessary to destroy the machine head virus. We had located the source of the virus and built a vehicle, flippantly called the Vulpal Blade, to transport a nuclear bomb into the blighted heart of the machine head. But we had a problem. To bring the Vorpal Blade to its full operational capacity required a sophisticated artificial intelligence. In short, a brain guided along the torturous and highly dangerous route to its goal. I had decided to upgrade the Institute's CPU with encoded sequences from my own brain patterns and then implant this into the Vorpal Blaze operating system. But Orville had ideas of his own. I couldn't move. 
and my head hurt like hell. The geek had found us a brain all right. Unfortunately, it was mine. I had no choice. The bomb was primed and the geek had his finger on the auto destroy. There was nothing else I could do but ride that baby into the heart of the beast. Oh, that's in the real world. I thought this was like some weird VR thing. <laughs> is is the left channel only audio making this better or worse? <laughs> okay, let, let's see if we get multiple channels of audio in the main menu here. Nope, okay. So, wait. Now it's in stereo. What? What? <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I'm, uh... I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I, okay. <laughs> Let's, I, uh, okay. Ho um, uh, yeah, uh, all right, so we're we're definitely getting stereo here. <laughs> okay. Um. I uh. Sure. Yeah, it's still only left channel. Oh my god. Okay, well. <laughs> what? I, uh. Okay. Alright, let's do it. Alright, what's the controls here? <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's only going in the left channel for some reason. I, uh. Sure. All right, chain gun secondary. So, so the controls are real bad, by the way. You can you can probably tell from from this. Uh, this is not a great uh, control scheme. So, what we got here? So having the the weapons on the the triggers is not great, and it looks like there's no other way to do it. Yeah, you can only have the weapons on the triggers. There is no other option. <laughs> and, oh God. Okay. This is probably the least bad control option, I suppose. Yeah, the whole game is gonna be like this. So I hope you're ready for it. <laughs> like, okay. Here's something I can, I can kind of do. I can... Nope, I, okay. All right, what if I... All right, I'm going to go into my mixer. And I'm going to... All right, analog one, two. We're going to make this mono. All right. We're playing this one in mono, boys. <laughs> there, are you, are you ready for this? Oh, shit, it's not mono and OBS. Oh. All right, hold up. Let me... Uh, it, it made it mono for me, but not for you guys. All right, hold up. All right. Uh, mono, mono. There you go. All right. There you go. <laughs> We're playing this one in mono. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah, much better. We'll, we'll just we'll just do it like this. Remind me to change it back to stereo when we play literally anything else. Unfortunately, I can. Excellent! Okay, baby. Before I give you directions to the machine head, there's a couple of things I need for you to do. Oh my god. Not far from your present position, you'll find a real cool train sitting pretty, just like yourself. <laughs> In a hangar, the train's carrying fuel that I need for you to take to some scientist friends of mine. Just a pretext, you understand. So as you can get into their bunker and find out what they're at regarding the machine head. I want you to release the train and await further instructions. It's only an itty bitty little thing, but it'll make me real happy. Little things please little minds, Orville. Oh, your wit surpasses your beauty, Dr. Strive. And your stupidity surpasses your grossness, scumbag. I, uh... Oh, this this game. <laughs> oh my god. What a game. What a game. All right. This is totally not the right. All right, hold up. One more technical difficulty here. This is totally not the right OSC profile for this game. Uh this one, will this look any better? They're all going to look bad, but I'm looking for the least bad one. Maybe this one? Yeah, that one looks right. Okay. All right. Very important we have this incredible video game looking as good as possible. All right. So I don't know if you can you can tell looking at the control monitor, but the controls for this game are are pretty special. All right, so there's... There's unreality key number one, I guess. All right. Yeah, this, this is going to be a very motion-sticky game, and that's why I am gonna run on the assumption that I'm not going to actually beat this game. And the two, two-ish hours that we're going to do today, probably the two I'm ever going to play of this incredible experience. Though I didn't, I didn't check to see if there's, uh, if there's cheats for this to at least see the incredible cutscenes. Because the cutscenes seem to be worth watching. Destroy eight cocoons, okay. Wait, all right. Do we have, uh... This is like, this reminds me of, um, like, Atari Arcade in how, like, flashy and rainbowy the the text and, and things on screen are. This music, though. This ostensibly mono music. Pretty good. Well, isn't, isn't Forsaken, like, uh... A descent style game. Okay. I don't know what those things were. Yeah, I think. Uh, especially for 96, this is a, a quite good-looking game. Um, it, it's just kind of a shame that this came out before uh, before the DualShock was the thing, or Dual Analog, because this, this would probably be way more tolerable to play on an analog controller. But as, as it is, not great. Shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay.
Uh. Okay. I don't know if that was a friendly or what. Hmm. Okay. So effects wise, pretty good. Like graphically, especially for a 96 game and for a multi-platform 96 game, this looks really good and runs quick. Like I'm pretty sure this is pre-Tomb Raider. Car muffler, it does. Okay, so I think I, I think I did things slightly out of order here. So is this a, a switch? Unable to act. Okay. Uh, wonder how it looks on Saturn. I'm trying to remember if I have this on on my Saturn flash cart. I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure I put most of the US games on on my Saturn. So I might have this on there, but I don't really want to hook up the Saturn. I might be able to hook up the Saturn next stream though. So so my my plan for backlog playthroughs is to never really play the same system twice. And I was thinking after Yoshi's Island to do a Saturn game, perhaps. Because um, there's there's quite a few Saturn games that I I would like to play through. Okay, it looks like... Okay, so over there is the... So this is likely that, that generator thing. Um, it'd be great if the manual actually said what, what any of these things are on the map. Uh, oh, it does say, okay. Unreality keys are depicted in green. Reality keys are red. Objectives flash white concentric circles and unreality terminals are blue. Uh, so the green things? So we're going for the green things, apparently. So there's one up in the upper left corner. But yeah, for, for Saturn stuff, um, so Panzer Dragoon Saga is on the, on the to-do list. Um, Burning Rangers is on the to-do list. Uh, what else? Nights into Dreams is on the to-do list. And so I think there's a few more Saturn games. There's Clockwork Night 1 and 2. Um. Man, there's a lot of enemy variety in this game. Even at level 1. Oh, it's up there. Okay. Yeah, Astle. Yep. Yep, Astle. I remember watching Jire do uh, do speed runs of that years ago. Okay, how do I get up there? I don't think there's a jump mechanic in this. At least the manual didn't say anything about it. Uh. Yeah, Burning Rangers looks really cool. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's any Sonic games of note on Saturn. At least not none that I can remember. How the hell do I get up there? It looks like you should just be able to... Just go up this ramp like that, but apparently not. Yeah, the controls are, are not amazing. Is there anything in the special weapons for get there? That's a flamethrower. Huh. 
And I don't see anything in the in here about being able to get up there either. I probably just have to get up to the upper level and then just just gun it, I guess. 3D blast. Uh, I think if I was gonna play that, I would probably just play the the Genesis version. I'm pretty sure they're they're both the same, right? How do I even get a Honestly, unsure how I'm supposed to get up there. Uh, Soul Hackers. Um, there's a, a DS version of that now, I think, or 3DS or something. Um, but then again, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, of the SMT games that aren't Persona. Let's put it that way. Um, hey, Matt. Uh, vacation was good. I had a lot of fun going to the, the Clipper game. Got to sat, sit pretty much courtside at the Clipper game last, uh, last Monday. Which, as it turns out, at Staples Center, um, if you're not sitting literally at courtside for the basketball game, it's actually worse sitting uh, that close to the court if there's people in front of you, because you can only see like the top half of, of the players and you can't tell who has the ball. So <laughs> you might as well just save the money uh, if you're gonna go to the game and get a seat that's slightly higher up. I wasn't the one paying for the tickets, so it's not a huge huge deal to me, but for for future future attending games, it is way better to to sit slightly higher up. Especially at Staples Center. Yeah, Game Hut. Game Hut's got a cool channel. Flamethrower fuel? Okay. None of these things help me get up there. And I don't see anything on the map about even getting up there. Hmm. <clears throat> Erwin. Yeah, yeah, the, the seat was great. Uh, like, uh, just going from the pictures, but for those pictures, I held the camera, I held my phone way above my head to take them. So when you're actually sitting in your seat, it's, uh, even for somebody tall like me, it, it is not a great experience. And if you're not tall, it's even worse. And plus, there was there were some douchebags that did have courtside seats that stood up all the time, and they would block the view of anybody even, like, close to them. And they just stood up for most of the game, too. So I, I felt real bad for the people who sat directly behind them. Wait, is this, is this what I was trying to get to? Okay, we got a reality key. Um. Okay. Oh, I seem to. All right. Um, I seem to remember according to the manual. So the unreality keys. If you use the unreality key, it will change the. Oh, there's key number two. Okay. Um, if you use the unreality key at a terminal, it'll change the the terrain. So maybe that will allow me to get up to where that's, um, that uh, this thing is by like lowering it down or something. That's probably the purpose of that. Okay. All right, I'm slowly getting used to this game. But yeah, let's see. Other Saturn stuff. Uh, we already did the, the two Pange Dragoon shooters. And still have to do Pange Dragoon Saga. I got key two, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's key three. Okay. This makes way more sense now.
All right. Can't blow those up. All right. Now where are we going? It looks like we're heading down to the, the bottom center. Oh. Zombie up there. So if anyone's rolling in here after we got started, um, this is how the game is supposed to sound. Uh, let's see, here's the stream audio. This is how the game's supposed to sound. <laughs> For whatever reason, the audio or the, the soundtrack in this game, it, it only comes through in the left channel. I don't know why, but that's, that's, that's how it'd be for this one. So I have the, the game audio is actually set to mono it is kind of our solution on how to address that. I have a feeling what happened is the uh, the disc for the game that fell off the back of a truck off the internet and onto my hard drive. Um, whoever ripped it probably uh, compressed the tracks to mono maybe? And then that's how they distributed it to, to save a little bit of space, perhaps. Um, that's that's like the only thing I can think of why that uh, why that would be like that. Oh. Okay, got him. Popful Mail. I think I've heard of that. Is that also on Super Nintendo? Oh, geez. Okay, I got to get up there. Somehow. Can I climb that? No. Okay. very effective turret they got there. Just shooting that one direction. Okay. Alright. Probably the exit. Pretty satisfying explosions in this game. Like the... There's a lot of polish to this game. Like, as, as goofy as a lot of things are in this, there is, uh, there is a lot to like about this one. Okay, can I go back up here? I can't. That's a problem. That's, uh, that texture warping, though. Man, that... All right, this is an issue. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on, get up there. Golden Eye are way up there. Oh, I got a working designs port. Well, a working designs localization is still better than no localization at all.
All right. Eventually, this thing will blow up. Okay. That was the cocoon? Okay. Sure. Okay, so we take this to... So thinking of any other, is there anything else on the Saturn I really care about? Apparently Bulk Slash is good. Like there, there's apparently really good Japanese only games, but I, I'm probably not going to, to play that many games that aren't in English, unless it's like really, really easy to play without knowing Japanese. Oh, there's also Sonic R. I almost forgot. Can't you feel the sunshine? Of course we can't forget. Sonic R. And everybody's supersonic racing. Where even am I? So I need to go left from here, it looks like. Lunacy? I think I have that. Oh, there's also Mr. Bones. I forgot. Mr. Bones is... It, it, it seems a pretty solid meme game. So I gotta give that one a look. It's apparently a, like, rhythm platformer or something. Where he plays a literal skeleton who plays the trumpet. Or something. And apparently it's a hot, uh, a hot game. So I'll have to give that one a look. Uh, what else? All right. So where do I take this? So it looks like I need to go back this way. So it's it's either that that. So unreality terminals are blue, but we've already we've already used some of these terminals. So it's it's got to be this one. And it says objectives flash white concentric circles. So this this is flashing white here, but it's not a circle. So uh, and and what these are, I have no idea. <laughs> sure. Hey, Saint. Mr. Bones. Okay, we have the, the Saint seal of approval on Mr. Bones. We'll have to give that one a look. Oh, shit. Did I just... Oh, no. Uh... How do I get out of here? Um... Do I need to... Okay, here we go. This works. Man, do I really have to have to strafe my way up this? Wow. Okay, so just just going forward up it goes super slow, but if you strafe up, it's actually quick. All right. Assuming this way. Oh, 
Oh, it wasn't that. Uh, I guess, I guess the one in the bottom left then. Uh, or it's or it's this. Unable to activate any power now. So, so we still have an objective. Oh, so here's this. Okay. So what did that do? Bridge. Okay. So. I'm guessing those, the circles are the cocoons. Man, there's 15 levels of this. I, ugh. Like, I think this game is neat and all, but I'm not sure this is play 15 levels neat. And yeah, I bet the, the Saturn version of this is even worse. PC version is probably fine, though. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is still the first mission. Yeah. Some flamethrower ammo for the flamethrower I have yet to use. Only open by train. Okay. Man, this is. We got some. These polygons are having a bad time right now. Oh, okay, so this is how we get above this area. So this is above where the, the second unreality thing was. And I'm assuming there's more spider cocoons up here. Okay, there's nothing up here. Besides its health. Well, that... That doesn't help me. Okay. Oh, by the way, Saints, I don't know if you're still here, but uh, thank you for that very nice tweet you, you sent out like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. I really appreciated that. Uh, okay, so we're still looking for these cocoon things. And I'm pretty sure they're just marked on the map, but... I think I have to go back through that, that water maze again. Because I don't... I don't think there's any... So I think I need to get to these. But how I do that... Oh. Ah, there we go. And that will likely turn the power on. There we go. Okay. All right. 
Our nightmare is almost over. We are soon to be 115th through this game. Yeah, those must be the uh, the objectives. So the according to the manual, um, according to the manual here, if this ever updates, I'm not sure why this doesn't update properly. I'll have to try and fix this later. Will this update? No. <laughs> okay, well, according to the manual, it says objectives flash white concent concentric circles. And these aren't white. And and those were those were still rainbow colored. So I I don't know what the deal is. Alright, so now we can make it back to the opening part of the level. It looks like enemies respawn, which is I guess kind of helpful because you you need enemies to uh, to get health on this. So that's another thing. If if you weren't here for the uh, the lore part of this, um, for whatever reason, there is a time bomb strapped to the the main character that we're playing here, and if your health goes below twenty, which you can actually kind of see the mark right here. If it goes below that mark on the health meter, a time bomb starts. And if the if you don't get above 20 health by the time that that finishes, uh, you die. Which sounds like a fantastic, fantastic thing to have to deal with. Okay. Saturn map is different? I don't know. Maybe the Saturn version has an even shorter render distance. Purple blit. Okay. All right. Do we get some more incredible FMV here? Checking format? All right, so we get passwords and save games. Confirm save, okay. All right, so it looks like it does take up only one save slot. Despite the back of the box saying we need memory card, which implies we need a whole memory card. <sighs> Guide train, oh, jeez. This... Maybe, maybe this is a shorter level. One can only hope. Uh. on ammo. For reality. Where's the reality gate? Open. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Textures, please. I can't see. Track switch left? I. What? What is. 
Is it that? Okay, that's a track switch, apparently. Sure. Yep, an escort mission. They're checking all the boxes here. It wouldn't be a vehicle... A vehicle shooter game unless we had some escort missions. And you just have to crash into things to activate them in this game, which is pretty neat. I can appreciate that. By the way, I am I am feeling it right right about here with this game. And that's never a good sign. So I guess it is probably a good sign because I am I am already done with this game. <laughs> like this. How long have I been playing this? 42 minutes, yep. But that seems about right. sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Did the... Did my... Did the friendly train blow up or something? Oh, this. I gotta... Oh, I don't have key number one. Okay. So key number one is... So the green dots are unreality keys. So it looks like there's one past here. But I can't get to that. How the hell am I supposed to get to the... So all the... All the unreality keys that are marked on the map are in places I can't get to. Unless I'm supposed to, like, jump over. So I already activated this. That's closed. Makes me wonder if I, I softlock this or something. Must be back here then. And I somehow missed it, even though clearly there's nothing on the map. Hmm. Yeah, so it's it's like oh there it is, okay. It's back this way. And over here. There we go. I got the impression when the level started that um, that you couldn't get too far away from the train or else it would blow up or something. So that's why I just kind of rushed through that first area. Okay. train. Get moving. Oh, okay. Alright, just like everything else in this game, you have to just run into it until it does something.
the reality key door. Pretty sure I already have reality key one. Oh shit. I have reality key one. Why isn't this... Completely option area. My favorite kind. Oh man. This game. Eh. So I don't have key three yet. Something else somewhere was shooting at me as well. Uh. Oh man. A higher FOV, yeah, that would probably help a lot, but I'm sure it's because of performance considerations that they, they had to do it like this. In order to keep up the steady 20 FPS. <laughs> I'd imagine with uh, an even higher FPS, it would like it would probably help with motion sickness, but it would probably be just as bad because the the frame rate would be so low. All right, so I'm still missing the key. So so yeah, the the key is either here or here, and I'm not sure I. I can even get to those areas. Uh, I probably have to skirt around the top here. There we go. Wait, this is key four. Still need key three. Maybe, maybe you could do these out of order? There's key three. I sure. Alright, hold up, I gotta shoot this spider demon from, from Doom 2 on here. Yeah, it is steady. You got to give it credit for that. Not everything can keep up a steady frame rate. Especially for a 96 game. Like, that's another thing to keep in mind. This is this is still pretty early PlayStation. And being a multi-platform game. Like, credit where credit is due. The technical... Development for uh, for core core design pretty good. Do I even have a, a disruptor gun? To oh, I do. All right. I'm assuming it's that. Oh shit! We got dangerously close to <laughs> to the the time bomb activating. Pretty sure we're almost done with the level though. All right, much shorter level this time.
Eh? Health would be amazing. Of course, there's not going to be any health drops here. Nothing has dropped health in a very long time. And then, of course, we've got one of these things to contend with now. Warning! Energy low. Shit. Alright, this thing should drop health. No? Still no health? Dude. <laughs> okay, they finally a health drop. just kind of stopped here. Uh... That, that terminal to the right of me. Okay. Health drops would be great. Also, being able to go up slopes, not sideways, would be great as well. Okay, so it looks like... I gotta go all the way around this thing and then make a jump over to the, to the right. This game is, like, really grating on the senses. <laughs> like, the, the combination of the... The just non-stop... Music. Just shooting all the time. The super bright colors. The, the bad FOV. The bad frame rate. Just, like... This game is just kind of an assault on the senses. <laughs> And not in a good way. Of course, no health drops. Oh boy. Still no health drops. Alright, I'm assuming I have to go this way to get back to the train. Thank you. 
Finally some help. I don't like that sound. Uh, okay, so to get back over there, I need to go... This way? Actually unsure where to go now. How do I even... Train exiting area. Oh, okay. It just... Alright. Solves that problem for me. All right, very exciting. It's actually our second save, so we'll just do that. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get a different mono left channel only music track for the next level. <laughs> nope. If only. Wishful thinking. All right, well, that, that spider is inside the train, so I guess I'm not going to worry about it. Beautiful. We're looking for a bunker, apparently. Spider getting over here, apparently. All right, looks like there's a key up over this way. sound design just oh man it leaves a lot a lot to be asking yeah I don't know this might actually be like every single level is the escort escort hot dog face train That would be part of the course for 95, 96, 3D game design. But I got to do it because I, I want to know what happens to to Southern accent scientist lady. I'm sure it'll be worth it. Let's, can we strafe up this? Okay. We we doom SR seventy our way up there. Whatever it is. Not supposed to be up there, apparently. Uh, 
And I might have soft lagged myself by getting up here. Whoops. Uh, whoop. Oh. What? <laughs> um. <laughs> I, uh. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> sure, that was water. Uh... Oh man, this game... <laughs> I, uh... Sure. Oh. Oh. I'm stuck in the wall. Stuck in the ground. Somehow. What? That was definitely not like that when I first came over here. So I'm thinking about it. So the the next piece explosion game is um, Civilization Two, and I think I might run a poll for which um, civilization we play as. There's like 20 different choices. Let's blow up the car. What does the game want me to do here? Oh, hit that. Okay, so we need key two, wherever that is. the mouse? I don't believe so. It doesn't say anything about the mouse on the box. And usually the box is correct. Um, but I, I tried out a little bit of the game just to make sure that it works. And uh, the interface seemed fine to me for controller-based input because it's a, it's a tile-based game anyways. So... And it's not like it's a real-time game, so... So from what little I played of it, it seemed like it, uh, it worked fine with the controller anyways. Okay, so... I need to get to this, probably. That or that is probably what I need to get to. It'd be nice if this was, like, labeled in any way, but... Can't have everything. Alright, so that's... that's water, apparently. Sure. And this is key three, which is not going to be immediately useful. Okay, so that means key two is probably the one directly east of me. 
Maybe? Because that's kind of where the train is. If I can get over there. Greeks or Egyptians? I can't remember if two is the one where there's a glitch that made made Gandhi super aggressive, I think. Or if that was specific to only the PC version or something. I remember that being a thing, though, where, like, where Gandhi would immediately go straight to nukes and just nuke everybody in one of the versions of the game. I gotta run into it to get it to Okay. Oh it is Civ 2. <laughs> Alright, well maybe maybe we'll see that. I've actually the only Civ type game that I've ever played is Alpha Centauri, so. This will be pretty new to me. I, I typically don't play the the grand strategy games like this, so this will this will be a fairly new experience for me. Like I'm pretty sure I have been in my Steam and and whatever accounts like Civ three, Civ four, Civ five. Just I have them, just never played them. All right, reality altered. All right, so key four is in the far north. I'm not sure that matters, though. Oh, they coded him like that intentionally? Nice. of reality key somewhere. Reality key two. All right, where's reality key one then? Okay, it's probably that thing way off the lower left. How I get over there though is all right. It looks like I just got to gotta go fast over this presumably lava Rise of Nations is great. I think I, I think I played that. Because that one's kind of a, a cross between Age of Empires and and Civ, if I remember correctly. So it had like the the progression stuff that would happen in a, a match of Civ, but it happened in the 
the time span of an Age of Empires game. I think that was what that game was, right? This game, getting a lot of mileage out of this one track. All right. So there's the key over to the left. Empire Earth, huh? Don't think I've heard of that one. Uh, did I not activate this? One more terminal over there that we don't have the key for yet. There's a key up there. Uh. Okay, how do I get out of here? See an easy way to get out of here. Okay, I guess I gotta drop down. I really don't want to because that might make things even worse, but looks like that's my only choice. this from down here. No. No. Well, I could just go over here. That works too. Alright. GG. Level complete. Traditional RTS are dead? Yeah. And, and we've seen how Blizzard's been, been treating the old Warcraft lately. <laughs> uh. Because it's kind of the, the space that traditional RTS used to fill has kind of been taken up by MOBAs really recently. Like your League of Legends, your, your Doters. Your other MOBAs besides those two. I don't play any of those, so I don't really know. Plus, with MOBAs, you don't have to worry about making a single player or tuning bots and all that for them. Okay. All right. This So this level's green instead of everything's red. But there's new enemies, at least. So, hey, that's something.
Yeah, it, there was also like hope for decent uh, Age of Empires for a while, but I think uh, after the the free to play Age of Empires thing kind of kind of flopped, I think they just <laughs> they they put out those those remasters of two and just said, okay, we good. Just you guys are just playing this anyways, so I guess we won't bother making new ones. And the, the competitive scene for uh, for Age of Empires 2 just continues to be weird and intriguing to me. Like with all the weird uh, micro micro management that uh, that has to go on and matches that for high level play. Let's go up. No. Maybe I have to... So it looks like I need to take a ramp to get over here. And this is key two anyways, so this is probably not where I need to be right now. So... It's probably the one just straight ahead from here. We literally aliens right now, I guess. Okay, that's key. that's terminal two. All right, terminal one is back this way. that even do? I'm assuming that made a ramp to get over to to that. Okay, I'm gonna use this to go over here. Okay. And then one in the center. So I'm still not sure what the menu or what the manual meant about concentric rings being a thing for marking things on the map, but that was the Saturn manual, so maybe that's just a Saturn thing, and the, the PlayStation couldn't render concentric circles for some reason. So they just made things flash instead. Entirely possible. Okay. Oh, I guess things that... Alright, I just now figured this out. Like, four levels in. So anything that's flashing on the map, like this, this is flashing white, and this is flashing white. So those are things that the Unreality Terminal um, messed with the geometry of the level. And that's what that's noting. It, it, did, it did take me over an hour playing this game to figure that out. It's one of those days. But I'm pretty sure the manual did not explain that, so... In my defense. Okay, so there's a key at the, the top part there, but... sure how I get to that key. Yeah, so there's a key, like, either above or below this that I probably have to, to do some unreality to get to. What the hell is that thing? So these are enemies, apparently?
key three yet. Or key five. Those are probably friendlies. Okay, it looks like I go through here. Oh man, this game. What am I stuck on now? Oh, shit. Okay. This way. Oh, boy. So things were going smoothly in this level, and then... It made the walls a little too close. And for what it's worth, I think this this has the potential to be an okay speed game, probably. Like if you if you just know exactly where you're going and aren't getting stuck and don't do unnecessary things. This might be neat stringing together a playthrough where you're not bumping into walls and shooting unnecessary things. But as a casual game, eh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. It's not to say it's all bad, though. Oh, okay, that's why. That's why there's something outside the map. Yeah, like if I had, uh, if I had to say coming into this game, I expected this to be just completely awful. Okay, maybe not completely awful because I, I know that the, the studio that made this has pedigree. And they, they typically put out, at the very least, average to above average games. And yeah, this this is probably right right in line with that uh, with what I expect from, from a core design game. Sub basement security clearance, do not hero? 
Do not hero. Do not peepo. Do not fifo. DC hot. Hero. Oh, do not feed. Okay. Sure. And this is probably a boss. Sentinel. Got him. All right, maybe we get some sweet FMV after all that. No? Please give me FMV game. Come on. I'm kind of toying with the idea of pressing that auto destruct right now. But you won't do that, Orville, because you need me as much as I don't need you. Uh, you damn know how right you are, baby. Okay, this is where things start to get real hard. <laughs> Somewhere ahead, you're gonna see two humongous hills, and they're just teeming with real nasty mutant termites. The kind that are real partial to bait flesh instead of wood. <laughs> you gotta find the entrance to the hill on this side of the river. Once you're there, I'll be in touch. So until then, it's bye-bye, baby. Missing you already. Got a new song. Right. Can I get up here? Am I supposed to get up here? There's a reality key somewhere. Ah. Okay. Okay. And the way out is not here. All right, this song is a lot better. Than this. But I guess anything was better than that other song. What? 
That was it? That was the whole level? I, uh... All right. More, more levels like that, please. Okay, well, the teleporter's in the middle. I found it. Uh... So it looks like I need to go to the north. No, not there. So what areas are accessible to me right now? There's reality keys. Hmm. Oh, man. So this is this is where the loading screen was, where they got it from. The hell is this thing? This is like stronger than the boss. Yeah, this this level is noticeably easier on on my everything compared to previous ones. Okay, maybe not this the Senate part, but and for whatever reason that enemy can only be hit from like right in front of it. That was key too. Where haven't I been? So I probably have to go this way and then go west from here. All right, so where do we use reality key to? Great that enemies can shoot you from far away, but I can't even see him half the time. Come on. Don't do that to me, game. Time Gaming 508. Welcome. Uh, 
Oh, jeez. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's... I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> in terms of the map, I think I'm on a lower level now. Yeah, the manual didn't say anything about the the guys in, in rat suits being important for anything, so I'm going to run on the assumption that you don't have to keep them alive for any any purpose. Okay, and reality 2 was... Actually, I guess it'll flash on the map. Okay. That opens this. We bought a GameCube game yesterday. Was it a good one? Because there are... There's a limited choice for good GameCube games. There's PN03, and that's about it. Just a disc with no game on it, just the the quarter size GameCube disc. Well, that's nice. I'll make a necklace out of it or something. Hey, hidden. Welcome. All right, what can I even do? I have I have two and three reality keys. Uh, so there's a flashing. the hell? So where can I use reality key for? Uh, machine head jokes? Nope. They've been very little. Though the, you have you have missed some amazing things of this game. So so put on some headphones if you got them. And I'm, I, I know you do, uh, because this is how the game is supposed to sound, like like this. And actually, to to get the full effect of it here, can I? Oh, I can't. But so for whatever reason, the the music in this game is in the left audio channel only. <laughs> so what I had to do was go into the mixer, and. Uh, and make the game, the game feed mono. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, that, that is the exact face that I made when, when I booted up the game and heard that. Like, I, I'm pretty sure it's because whoever, whoever made the ISO of the game that I got, like, uh, ripped it wrong, maybe? Is the only thing I can think of for why it did that. But that's how it be. Okay, so... It looks like I can go around this corner here and... And yeah, th this game also has plenty of the dankest memes besides the the mono audio. So the the protagonist of the game that we're playing here is the the welcome to Jacksonville lady from Hooters Road Trip. It is literally her. 
This game is canonically part of the Hooters Road Trip verse. Okay, so I have Reality Key 5. What can I do with it? It looks like I can... I can maybe... Maybe go here? Maybe that's where I'm supposed to go? Or like one of these? I don't know. So that's Reality 5, or Unreality 5. We're looking for Reality 5. Yeah, who'd have guessed that Hooters Road Trip had lore equal only to Shenmue in the Grand Stream Saga? Okay. Almost got some particularly annoying enemies. Okay. And this uh, this game is also made by the uh, the Tomb Raider team. <laughs> and this is I think this predates Tomb Raider. Why is there suddenly a, an objective marker right here? Uh, so it looks like something changed over here? I guess. So we have key three and five, and we haven't used them yet. Unreality key five. Actually, is this just a teleporter? Can I, uh... Okay. It looks like we can just end the level right now. Or just die. Horribly. Oh, fuck. Uh... Well, guys, I think I'm done with this game. <laughs> Especially if to do all that shit all over again from the start of the level. If this doesn't put me back at like a checkpoint or something, then then I'm fucking done with this one. Damn. I'm pretty sure it does. All right. Place your bets for what the save icon is, I guess. Oh, machine head. All right, we can at least see that incredible opening cutscene again. But yeah, this is, this is what the game is supposed to sound like. Uh, advanced audio properties. Oh, I did have it on on mono. Whoops, my bad. There you go. So there, there's mono, and then here's the, the left audio channel only amazingness. Alright, let's, let's at least see the... And, and why would you do this? Why would you turn off the one good thing about this game? Like, come on now. Please, little minds, Orville. Oh, 
Following your wits surpasses your beauty, Dr. Strive. And your stupidity surpasses your grossness, scumbag. Aw, shit. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. There is a level select cheat code. We're gonna do it. We're gonna at least see the shitty ending to this game. <laughs> we're going straight to that final boss rather than just saying fuck it. Because I, I have seen enough, but let's at least see what the ending is. Okay, at the main menu, it is... Okay. Alright. Level select, use R1 and R2. Oil wells. So that's level 3, 4... Termite swamps infest the catacombs. Termite hive. Orbital headquarters. Unreality. Yeah, we might as well turn on God mode too while we're at it. And ammo. Alright. Circle, 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 and one circle. All right, infinite ammo, and then okay. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's see. Let's see the incredible ending. We're checking the Game Shark checkbox here, and then I will never play this game again. <laughs> All right, this is the final level, apparently. And th this looks like the final level of, uh... Uh, Tiny Tank. All right. Yeah, like enemy rush and also also maze. What it doesn't look like is fun. <laughs> so at least at least there is or doesn't appear to be a time on it. So it could be worse. Very exciting final level here. So now I gotta all the way back that way. Okay. 
already ready for the the incredible final boss. It's it's a turret. The final boss is a turret. I died with God mode on. I died with God mode on. <laughs> uh. All right, cool level. Let's do it again. Uh. At least now I have a somewhat better idea of how to approach this. level probably would have been way harder if they just didn't give you a map. So for the record, I am very glad they give you a map for this. <laughs> this would have been horrible otherwise. All right, so how am I supposed to approach that final boss? Okay, I'm still not sure what what will drown me and what won't in this game. Because everything looks like water. And there isn't like a warning or anything that the, the game puts on screen for like, hey, you're drowning. You just go from you're fine to you're drowning. All in one go. So this this is clearly like a road. So as long as I don't fall down in there, then I'm I'm fine. And then that's supposed to damage you, I guess. Well done, Kimberly. Okay. This ending better be amazing. Take from you. 
I can take it. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me hard. You got it. <laughs> that, that was art right there. Uh, uh, Andrew, dude, how? And then this sick ass synth wave ending song. They had five designers working on this. Oh, it's just loops. Okay, there's only two voice actors in this whole game. Sure. So, so the final boss of ma uh, the machine head was was our our scientist assistant this whole time, I guess. I huh. Came in time for the ending. You didn't miss much. <laughs> the the rest of the game was eh. And, and I skipped to the end. I, I got about a third of the way in, and then I just went to the main menu, used level select, and then went to the final the final level. And the final level sucked. Whoa. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And then the ending was... was the ending. Alright, let's make two saves, just in case there's a... there's a unique second uh, save icon. Alright, place your bets for what the save icon is. Um, I'm not sure what the icon for this would be. Like, it, it might just be like an M or something. It is what I'm what I'm thinking. Yeah, or the munching face, some boobs. Yeah, these are all valid. A vowel of things. Let's, uh, let's see here. All right, we can turn stereo back on now that we're not, <laughs> now that we're not going to play that one again. All right, I got to turn stereo back on in my, my mixer here. Let's see, this is analog one. There we go. Okay. Yeah, give me that full volume. Skirt, skirt, squeal. All right, and the save icon is what is that? <laughs> uh. The start of the game, they show.
Well, whatever it is. gone now all right <laughs> let's wrap this one up shall we oh, i was on the tv that must be the the machine head logo or something sure all right machine head completed no cheated yeah so, so even though we beat it, I'm not going to say we, we finished it because we only did like a third of the levels and nah. But I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this outcome. All right, things I liked. Um, pretty good graphics for 96. Uh, solid and stable frame rate. Uh, some cutscenes were unintentionally funny. Or maybe intentionally, I don't know. Maybe maybe they did them like that on purpose. But sometimes you never know. Especially with with mid to late 90s stuff. Sometimes you just don't know. Uh, a few of the music tracks were good. That, that's about all the nice things I could say about it. Uh, very monotonous. Uh, needed to mix up the background music more often. Uh, FMVs were very low rent. FMVs! Um... An option to fully customize controls would have been nice. Uh, inconsistent level length. Uh, no, no, not the bees. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Stereo audio would have been nice too. Um, let's see, uh, minimap was a little hard to understand. Uh, and I think that covers most of the stuff. Dank memes died to God mode on left channel only audio. Sure. What channel? Um, that ending. Uh, hot dog train. Protagonist suddenly has hair at the end of the game. Sure. Close enough, people. Um, blam. Nice. People got that one. Uh, that save icon. Uh, that's that's probably it for those. All right, drum bass, absolutely. Ayla Mouse. Some of those termites probably were, yeah. Close enough, so yeah. I'm gonna say yeah. It, it meets my standards of Ayla Mouse. Alright, difficulty is it hard? Um, so I played this on normal difficulty. I believe there was a difficulty lower than this and at least one higher than this. Um, so it it really wasn't that difficult. It, it was mostly wrestling with the controls was was the the hardest part of all that and figuring out where to go. Um, there were a few occasions where I died to just like flying over a portion of the map that that will drown you if you stayed on for too long, and there was no real good visual indication that those things were there. Uh, so that added some difficulty, I guess. Uh. 
and I, I guess we'll never know how difficult the final level actually was since I had infinite energy on and, and infinite ammo. I'm assuming those those things in the final area probably hit pretty hard. Um, but but all told, I'll just leave this at at three to five for now. All right, rating one to five. Um, I played worse games than this. I played better games than this. Uh, considering this is a 1996 FPS game, um, technically I think they they did a pretty pretty good job for this, especially being a multi-platform game. Um, I thought for the most part it it looked pretty good for a 96 game. It ran well enough. Uh, it, it kind of fell into the the visual thing of hey, let's make every every wall texture the same texture. Like, let's use this this ground beef texture for everything in the level. Um, for, I guess, visual consistency, but it, it really made navigating these levels kind of a chore. Um, so, so that wasn't too great. Gameplay-wise, uh, if you treat this as like an arcade shooter, which it, which it really is, um, I'd say this this is pretty par for the course for an arcade shooter. None of it never felt like too unfair um, gameplay wise besides like the the hey this floor kills you but good luck being able to tell that that it's a floor that kills you um, just, uh, there's just only so much you can do with the mechanic of hey get some keys and then shoot a bunch of things and then get to the exit um, so that that kind of limits the depth that this game can really achieve uh, but again, who knows if there's some something really cool in the the Termite Hill Two level, or in the the Hill level. But I kind of doubt that there was anything cool in those levels. Uh, I guess there was a cool mechanic that they had with the the Unreality Terminals, where you had to collect keys to activate these things, and they would physically change the level. That was kind of neat. But then again, you can do the same thing in a game by just having a door open and close to to access a new area. Like, the only difference here is that, oh, it raised up a, a part of the floor, or it lowered this mountain so you could get to the other side of it. Like, functionally, it's the same as just having a gate that opens and closes. So, I don't know. I, I, I thought it was neat, and I guess it's a good way to, to, to utilize stuff that you can do with the 3D, 3D game. But, but still, that's you can't have a whole game built around that if it's just a shooter. So... That's really not in its favor. Um, so would I say I had fun with it? I didn't have a, a bad time with it. Uh, it made me a little motion sick, but I eventually got past that once once we got the levels that um, had a slightly longer draw distance. Uh, like this is this is kind of one of those games where. You can't really turn your brain off while you're playing it. It is kind of the problem with this is that uh, with a lot of shooters, you can just turn your brain off and go off instinct and play. In this one, you kind of still have to think about what you're doing because there's there's keys you got to collect and then you got to watch your health and and all that. Um, so uh, that added a little unnecessary stress to to what could have been a more enjoyable shooter experience to me. Um, so this game isn't horrible, but I, I would say this is probably below average. So, so that's what I'll give it. All right, Machine Head. Finished in one sitting, just over two hours, three deaths, five saves. A two out of five. All right. So PS Explosion game number, what is it? 203 is... Let's uh let's pull it up here. Civilization Civilization 2. So this is game number uh 203 and will be the next proper piece explosion game that we play. Um somebody asked about mouse support earlier and nope, but it does take up 10 blocks on the memory card. <laughs> so so luckily I have a full memory card ready to go for this one. Um but for, for interface considerations, like you can see the, the cursors here. So you just hit the buttons to move the cursor around or you, you hold down L1 to, 
to bring up a menu. So you don't really need a mouse to uh, to play this one. So not going to worry about that. But yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be the next stream is where we tackle Civilization 2. And that is game number 203. So let's see what game number 204 is. So like with every every piece explosion pick that we've done recently, this is just going to be a straight up random pick by my server. Um, so the games, the, the genres that are ineligible to, uh, to be picked here are strategy games because civilization, first person shooters because machine head and I think strategy games or strategy RPGs. Cause it was, it was Rhapsody was the game before this, right? I think it was Rhapsody. Um, so those three won't appear. So. Game number 204 is Vanguard Bandits. <laughs> oh, God. All working designs game, boys. All right, 204. Vanguard Bandits, huh? Let's uh, take a look at the box here once I get this entered into my Danka base. Uh, where's it? Game number 204. All right, let, let's check out the check out what we're working with here. So we got a two disc game. It has the the weird looking T fifteen. We got some anime. We got Robo Pope here. Uh, <laughs> you have Gundam Pope. So, we, yeah, we got Robo Pope. We got Robo Lance Guy. Robo Bendy Sword Guy. Uh, uh, the good old mark of quality here. Um, two memory card blocks, analog control, and vibration control. Whoa, is this is this a fighting game? Is that a robot horse? Is that a Robo Centaur? <laughs> uh, um. So is this? Oh, this is Fire Emblem. Okay, so this is this is even more anime Fire Emblem. It looks like. Oh my God, this looks great. <laughs> oh man, this looks fantastic. Oh, front mission? All right. And it, this has got the... So, Alundra had a very similar box for it. Um, but also keep in mind that for the Alundra box art, um, Working Designs literally spoiled the ending to the game in the box art for Alundra. So, hopefully they didn't do the same thing here <laughs> with this game. Uh, and we'll we'll get to that when we get to the game, I guess. But yep, this is this is certainly an anime game. It looks like, <laughs> and then there there's Robo Pope again. All right, and then there, that's uh, that's Lunar Two Lady, I guess. Yeah, Lunar Two complete a demo CD. So they they say it's a two disc game, but what they really mean is one disc is a game, one is an advertisement. All right. And it, okay, Robo Pope does not have the Robo Pope thing on the on his hat on the disc, even though that's clearly the same the same one. Huh. All right, I, I'm sure that there's there's lore reasons for that in the game. When chains of oppression cut, when bitterness stains the land, when hope fades from memory. Those forced outside the law must rise to become heroes. Our games go to 11. And yeah, this... Huh. Alright. Well, I, I know literally nothing about this game, so we'll... Uh, we'll experience that one together. Okay, so that's going to be game number 204. That one will be after Civilization 2, which is probably going to take a while anyways. So we got... 
we got long civilization 2 and then right after that it looks like we have long rpg so it happens it happens that's what ps explosion is all about variety okay all right, I'm going to step away for, uh, let's say, two, two and a half minutes. And then uh, we'll get going on the, the second half-ish of the stream, which is starting my casual playthrough of Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. So, I'll see you in a few minutes. Stay tuned, if you want. Let's get this changed over here. And hopefully this works. Sometimes this just blows up everything. Hey, it works. Okay. Uh-oh. Send out this tweet. Changing to Yoshi's Island. All right. So Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World 2. Uh, this game is blind to me. Like I have, uh, I have never played through this all the way before. I've seen this played through many times, 100%, any percent, what have you, in speedruns. Um, though I personally never played more than like the first four or so levels before. Um, and this is one of one of many Super Nintendo games that are on the backlog. Uh, I had about four or so games that I I was trying to um, 
uh, decide on which one to do, and I just put those four into a randomizer, and and this is the one it, it picked for me to play. Uh, the other ones that uh, that were on the short list for this were Star Fox, Earthbound, and Super Mario RPG. Um, and then this was the other one. So the reason for those is that I actually have the cartridges for those. And um, if you think of what uh, this Star Fox and Super Mario RPG have in common, uh, and why I have the cartridges for those, see if you can figure out why I have the cartridges for those when I already have a flash card. <laughs> okay. All right. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Super Nintendo 1985 platformer, developed by Nintendo, published by Nintendo. And this is what Super Nintendo boxes look like. So cartridges for this are, are kind of wide like that. So the, the boxes are are wide for these types of games. So sure, there's there's the Mario and the Yoshi. Uh, here's the, the, the different style ESRB rating. So this was a 95 game. So between 95 and 96, they changed the the rating symbols to uh, to what we saw on Machine Head earlier in the stream. And yeah, this is uh, in the U.S. This was called Super Mario World 2. I think in Europe and Japan, it was just called uh, Yoshi's Island, just straight up Yoshi's Island. But over here, they they had to make sure that. People here knew that this was the sequel to Super Mario World. Otherwise, people wouldn't buy it, I guess. Um, all right, the evil Magic Cooper Kamek is out to kidnap Baby Mario. In the sequel to Super Mario World, you play as Yoshi. Your goal is to disgustfully carry Baby Mario back to his parents in the Mushroom Kingdom while avoiding all of Kamek's clever traps and evil minions. Enjoy the various backgrounds of the witch and vibrant locales of Yoshi's Island as you race to complete your quest. Is Yoshi up to the moment this task at hand? Help him toss his eggs, manipulate unique objects, and solve puzzling situations. When in doubt, don't be afraid to try everything. 16 megs of memory provides six worlds, each with eight stages. All right. Morphmation. That's... Nintendo, you're just making up things at this point. Morphmation delivers powerful special effects, scaling, rotating, and 360 degrees scrolling. Huh. All right. Huge characters and even bigger bosses require quick thinking. Battery backup to save your progress. I I think my cartridge is still using the original battery that came with it. And last I checked, it still, it still kept the save on there. That's still on the cart. So either I beat this in one sitting or I just hope that uh, the battery is still good. <laughs> uh... Like, I, I have the screwdrivers and all the stuff I need to open it and replace the battery if I need to, but I'm hoping I don't have to do that. <laughs> all right. So there's there's our screenshots. So these are the four screenshots that they try to sell the game to you. And, yep, that, that looks like a Super Nintendo game to me. Uh, sure. And yep, all the all the usual Nintendo crap on here of yeah, read all the safety info before you're playing the game. Well, yeah, I'll do that, Nintendo. And of course, this official seal. Assurance. Nintendo has approved the quality of this product. Only the the greatest and best games got that seal on it. And then here's what the cartridge looks like. My cartridge doesn't quite look like this because it's uh um I can't, I can't draw in here, but this part along the top is ripped. <laughs> so right at, right at where the label meets the top of the cartridge, it's kind of ripped. But besides that, it looks pretty much like that. Here's what the Japanese box art looks for the game. And this is this is some cute box art. Like, I think the, the Japanese version of the game looks a lot better. Also, Yasi. <laughs> Yasi Island. Sure. But that is, that is some colorful, colorful cover artwork. And I think that that's quite a bit better than this. This is like much more aggressive cover artwork compared to, hey, here's colorful pastel, pastel Yassis. But eh, I don't know. That looks pretty good too. And I guess they're both pretty representative of how the, how the game looks. So yeah. 
Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So my uh, my manual viewer thing here still isn't quite working right, which I'll have to figure out for the the next stream or so. But uh, the manual is is typical Nintendo manual. It's it's really good. There's a lot of lore. There's a lot of great illustrations in it. Um, maybe if I can get this working properly for the next stream, we'll be able to to actually show that properly. But uh, for now, we'll just uh, get right into it. Okay. So I gotta turn my TV back on because I went to sleep. Why, uh... Wow, I had uh, a thing on screen the whole time. Alright. Let's do it. Uh, oh, I need to start up this, uh, this as well. Okay, this is Comport 3 and Super Nintendo. There we go. Okay, hopefully this works. And we have sweet digital audio for this one. Because I'm able to properly get digital audio. All right, spit it in from the ultra match. I need to unmute it on my mixer. And hopefully it's going to be in stereo on like Blam Machine Head. All right, let's see what we get here. Hey. All right. Oh, I didn't set this to Super Nintendo mode. There we go. Perfect. All right. PAL version is also Super Mario World 2? Huh. Home to all the Yoshis. There's an E before the S for plural Yoshis. Yoshis are the, the shoes and saddle part of the Yoshi body. But there there is also fat Yoshi. And I don't I don't think fat Yoshi has a saddle. Hmm. 
Yeah, Fat Yoshi is just straight up naked. Just shoes only. Super Mario World 2 are Yasi Island. Let's turn on my Bluetooth SNES controller using the 8 bit Do SN30. And it actually works really well. Make sure my input monitor is working. It is. All right. So, so there is already a save on this cartridge when I got it. And that's why I'm assuming the save battery is still good for this cartridge. So, I I'm going to assume I'm going to be good by just <laughs> playing through this normally and not having to worry about my save getting deleted in the, the probably two sittings this will take to beat this. All right, while well, the Yoshis live, I'll in an uproar over the baby that fell from the sky. Maybe he seems to know where he wants to go. Okay. Wait, are, are Mario and Luigi twins? Is that official canon? A relay system. New adventures for the Yoshis and baby Mario. Okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not going for like 100% for this, which I I think is that's what getting all the red coins and all the flowers is I think the the completionist category for this game. All right, baby Mario falls off Yoshi's back, the countdown timer will begin. When it reaches 0, Kamek's toadies will kidnap baby Mario. Okay? Uh more stars you collect, the safer you are. Countdown timer will slowly count back up to 10. Complete a stage by passing Baby Mario to the next sushi. Okay. All right, so we're getting getting all the inputs. Okay. All right, so this is this is how you're supposed to play this game, from from what I remember of the speed round. You're supposed to. Okay. You can hover in the air for a short time. Yep, that, that's all I remember from watching Trihex do the speed run. Is get do that a whole bunch or something, and like. And then also you need to put it on hasty mode. All right, release to throw or push twice. I think we want release. All right. All right, let's do it. Make eggs, throw eggs. Got it. And we kept the two eggs that we started with. Okay. Grab an enemy with Y, which is this button. Uh, press down to make an egg. Try throwing an egg, press egg. Okay. Okay, I think all the other times that I played this game, I played it on, on not hasty mode. So I'm going to have to get used to, to letting go of A to throw. Okay. Press and hold A. Cursor blending move. Release A. Okay, so it does change the, the tutorial prompts for which... Uh, for which control scheme you use. Yeah, this game's got some... 
pretty good music. So this is uh, this is through a digital audio mod on my Super Nintendo, by the way. So this is directly from the the DAC on the uh, the console. So in theory, it should sound sound better than what you get with regular audio analog audio connections, but in practice, it's really not that big of a difference. And let's see, for for what counts as a death in this game, I, I think there is like a a death state in this. Like, if you fall into a pit, I guess it counts as a, a loss of a life. And if, uh, if Mario, baby Mario gets kidnapped, I think that's another loss of a life in this game. There's lives? Okay. Alright, we did it. One of my buttons is sticking, and I think it's a jump button, and that's that's kind of a problem. <laughs> I might have to order another one of these controllers. We can end the game? All right. Place your predictions for the amount of deaths. Eh. I'm going to guess low double digits for deaths, maybe. Whoa. Okay. Little close. <laughs> so there's also a ground pound, I think, in this. Eighty to a hundred deaths. All right, I, I'm gonna guess like thirty tops. All right, middle ring for continuing. Down a Y to make an egg. Okay. game as quite the soundtrack. That's something that Nintendo has always been really consistent with, is great, uh, great music. Start to display your score. Okay. Helicopter, touch the Yoshi block. Mario will be warped into Yoshi? Where into Yoshi? <laughs> oh, shit. That's, that's a pretty incredible icon there. A red coin up there if I want one, but not going for those. All right. Is that what I? Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, Nintendo. <laughs> It's a rocket, okay. <laughs> sure. Hey, Ed. Man, 
Man. They don't even let you do that in, in Mario Maker. You rescued a puppy at work today. Nice. Oh. Uh... Pound the ground. Pound the ground. So, a ground pound, you say. Yeah, yeah, that's another another speedrun thing, is you don't want to get the bonus games at the end. So they figured out weird setups for... Okay, you need to hit the, the level end at precisely this frame in order to... to not get the bonus game. that fuzzy. Wait, what? I want to touch the fuzzy. I've learned that things on balloons you can't just take out of the air. Uh oh. Okay, okay, okay. We're good. I don't know how I didn't get crushed by that, but I'm okay with it. Okay. What did this do? Throw the balloon key in the button sequences. That okay. All right. X, Y... I don't know the, the button names by heart for SNES, so... did I win? D uh, did I get an extra life or something? Oh, I got a one up. Okay. What does this accomplish? Uh. Uh. Sure. Uh. 
All right, we did it. <sighs> I won the satisfaction of knowing that I won. Still zero deaths. Okay. Three toadies. Oh, those are Camex toadies. I thought that was just a, a cutesy way to, to reference a toad. Okay. Nope. Shit. Wait, I thought it was three toadies. This is what? Oh, you only get three scratches. Okay. Ah, uh, good old scratchers. Okay. Oh, this is... I thought this was the, the Song of Storms for a second there. From another backlog game that I've never played through before. This looks suspicious. Oh. That's... No. Okay. Bert the big boy. That... I don't need that. So you could just skip most of this level doing this? No, 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 no! <laughs> A little too close there. And they just jumps into the lava. I... Just as I do. But... Okay. Uh, all right. <clears throat> <laughs> Great start. Great start. Perfect. Talk shit, get hit. As usually happens here. Uh... Oh, god damn it. Those fireballs go really high. Oh yeah, the other thing I remember from speedruns is that you can you can pretty much indefinitely flutter if you if you got the timing just right. I remember that being a thing. Or if you you like 
I, I can't even begin to do it, but... Oh, shit. They didn't fuck around. Well, that... I'd argue that was more NES. <laughs> more so, like, at least... At least this has some leniency. But NES, they definitely did not fuck around. Yoshi baby, are we a baby too? Oh, great start. This... This is... This is not going great. Got him. So I, I I think the next um, backlog game, by the way, is going to be a DS game, and I was gonna uh, do it for this stream, but I uh, I needed to order a um, uh, kind of the same armature thing that you put a uh, what is this donut lifts? Oh, it's just a donut block. Okay. Um, to attach my DS to, so that I don't have to crane my neck looking down at it for the whole stream. And I already made a, um, a mount for it. This is one of the best songs in the game, by the way, from what I remember as I talk over it. And it's a, uh, it's an adventure game that recently got a sequel. If that, uh, gives anyone any indication of what it might be. So a DS era adventure game that recently got a sequel. Shit. Lost in blue. Uh, I don't know what the the recent sequel's name is, but that ain't the name of the the DS game. At least. You don't know? I'll say what it is if nobody says it in a couple minutes here. But it was a DS exclusive. Of it either. Love how there aren't enough audio channels for the 
the drums to stay going for the whole time. Nope, it's not a Pokemon game. Pokemon is, is more RPG. This is a adventure-ass adventure game. All right, the game is Hotel Dusk. You got it, Space Plague. Yep, Hotel Dusk. Yep, Hotel Dusk is absolutely adventure. <laughs> First person adventure game. All right. Yep, and it's the, the one where you gotta hold it sideways like a book, the book style. <laughs> So I have it. I have um, I have a capture capable 3DS, so we can play it on original hardware. And I've always wanted to play it ever since I like first heard about it and wanted to play it. Okay. This is just a tutorial area. Red eggs create coins. Red eggs create. Oh, flashing eggs. Huh, okay. Neat. Yeah, and I, and I didn't hit up. And I'm pretty sure it got a sequel relatively recently. On, uh, on Switch, I think. Or on 3DS, I can't remember. How are you supposed to deal with these? You're supposed to ground pound them? Or hit them from behind? Ah, okay. Yeah, I figured if you... If you hit, uh, hit him in the face rather than towards the bottom, that also takes him out. Like that. That gets him. I think it, it also had Dusk in the title, and it's it's either very recent or it's uh or it hasn't even been released yet. I'm not sure which. Um. Because I remember it was, it was from like a recent direct or something. Where it's uh it's getting a, a Western release sequel. At least I think so. I Huh. Or I'm completely wrong, I don't know. <laughs> All I remember about about it was it was a really cool game that I've been wanting to play for a long time. That's really all I really remember about Hotel Dusk. And it's just been sitting on my DS flashcard for years and years and years. And I think I played like five minutes of it. That was a one-up that could have just grabbed shit. All right, still only one death. And we're like a sixth through the game already. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the next uh, backlog game. Assuming. Okay, here's everybody's favorite level. Oh, okay. 
Let's do Okay, so the watermelons. Okay, does does it give you bullets? Yeah, chase. Yeah, cold case invest. That's the one I'm thinking of. All right, it's time to touch fuzzies. Oh geez, you move automatically during that. Oh geez. Okay, so if I don't press anything. Oh man. Oh man. This This complicates things. <laughs> Okay. Nope. Oh, Don't. Oh, shit. Of course. Perfect. Of course. Sure. <sighs> oh, all right. No more touching fuzzies. Oh, no, that works. Oh, God. I guess your tongue counts as touching them. Turn around! Using the bendy bridge tech from Super Mario World 1. I'm trying to remember... 95. I think this... Didn't this game come out, like, right when the N64 was launching? In, uh... In Japan, at least? Either that, or, or maybe it was Donkey Kong... Country. Assuming if I still hit the bottom of the platform, it'll do damage. These guys steal your eggs, I think. Okay, so I need to hit the...
Probably could have used more eggs. Oh well. Do I like PC games or console games better? <sighs> Both, really? Um. So I I started out gaming on uh on console. So from like, oh shit, you can, okay, interesting. Um, so 1990s when I started gaming a lot and that was NES. And then I had access to a, uh, a PC at that time. So then I switched over to, um, switched over from NES to, and Genesis to PC gaming for a few years and then back to PlayStation, uh, N64, PS2, and then, uh, played PC games and console games at the same time, so... Uh... So, kind of both. <laughs> I, I don't really have a preference between the two, is kind of what I'm getting at. Though, if... If I had to... If it was like a desert desert island situation of oh shit of you can only bring a console or a PC with you or something I'd probably choose a PC If only for the cop out answer of hey you can emulate on a PC <laughs> and that there's a much larger library. All right. Yeah, PC is cheating. I know, I know, it's a cop-out answer. Or if you're, or if you're only restricted to like a decade, or a, let's say a console generation's worth of games, Like, like, maybe from, from 95 to 2000, uh... Okay. So, like, like, yeah, 95 to 2000, or maybe 2000 to 2005. That would probably be, like, the decade of, of stuff I would, I would choose. Or half decade, I guess. Like, it's kind of a toss up. So, so like 95 to 2005, let's say, if we took like a decade of gaming of uh, just console stuff from those 10 years, and that's all I could ever play ever again, I would I'll probably be okay with that, to be honest. And it, it would probably be console games from that, uh, from that decade. For just arbitrary decade of stuff. Oh, there's Poochie. There's our boy Poochie. Hitch a ride. Runs in the direction that Yoshi faces. Okay. Alright, Poochie. Okay. Oh, shit! Good job, Poochie. You nearly killed me. Okay. 
certain consoles? Well, like the Tiger Gamecom, I would say probably not. Um, like, if you didn't care about your eyesight, then you could probably get away with a, a DS or a 3DS. Though a, a similar cop-out answer to that would be um, a backwards compatible original model PS3 that does not have a, a yellow light of death on it, because that can that can play PS1, 2, and 3 games. Oh shit. Oh no! <laughs> Uh, PS3s have been able to be BIOS modded for many, many years. Um, if you're going to install a custom, it's called custom firmware uh, for PS3. Oh, shit. If you're going to do that, um, the model to do for those is the kind of middle model of the PS3. It's called the the slim and not the super slim or the, the fat, pH fat of PS3. Um... Because the, the original models are going to give you overheating problems. Um, and some original uh, fat models are just... Like, you can permanently fix the uh, some of the um, yellow light issues with them. Because people have, have recently figured out that it's a... Uh, it's the these weird transistors, I think, is what the component is. Um... They deliver dirty power to the uh, the processor and the GPU on the PS3, and somebody actually figured out that you could desolder that faulty component from the PS3 uh, launch models and permanently fix the power issues and the the yellow light issues on them. But you need to have like really good desoldering skills and the, the equipment and the experience to do that. Um, so it's not easy to do. And the... Um, the slim model PS3s you can modify for... Uh, custom firmware with... All you need is a USB stick. That's all you need. <laughs> to, to modify... The, uh, the PS3. And pretty similarly for the uh, the Vita and PS TV as well. Um, and I'm not condoning this or anything, but there is a thing called No Pay Station, where you could just straight up download the games <laughs> from PSN directly onto your device. Again, not saying you should do this, but it is a thing that exists. Um, and then doing custom firmware stuff also, like, you can't go on PSN with it, so if you care about multiplayer, don't do that. Um, yeah, 3DS had something similar. Uh, let's see. But yeah, uh, like, custom firmware stuff for PS3 is just dead easy. It's so easy to do. You just put a thing onto a USB stick, run the system update, and then uh, job done. That's it. <laughs> Alright, perfect. Hook into the real PlayStation servers? I believe it does. It, it essentially just tells the, the Sony servers, like, yeah, I own this. <laughs> and then you just download stuff. It is, it is sketchy as fuck. And I have never personally used it. I know of it. This... Okay, you hit that and you go up. Oh, shit! 
This game has a lot of stage-specific gimmicks. Okay. Alright, sure. Yeah, PSN was was down for like three months at one time in God, that was like 2008, I want to say. When it was like a yearly competition with uh, with hacker groups for like, how long can I take down PSN for this year? <laughs> Something. And it was usually right around Christmas, too, and that, that that was probably one of the more fucked up things about it. We're like, hey, congrats, little Timmy, you got a, a PS4 for Christmas. Too bad you can't use it because uh, some asshole hacked PSN or is DDoSing PSN and now you can't activate it. But that's, that's how it be sometimes, I guess. Yeah, the other OS thing. Well, the, the the weird thing about other OS was uh, um, people were actually using the, the Linux version of PS3 for um, like actual supercomputing things. It's like the, the Air Force, I believe, used that for like a cheap, uh, cheap supercomputer. And I think some universities did too. And only very recently started getting rid of them. Because apparently whatever they were doing with, uh... With PS3 Linux, it didn't, um... It didn't give them issue... What is this? I, uh... Uh... All right. All right. Sure. And yeah, whatever, whatever the the Linux on PS3 stuff did didn't stress the CPUs enough to to make um. didn't make any of the, the weird overheating problems a thing. And I assume that's because it didn't use the GPU. Is this the first first appearance in a Mario game of these, uh, of the thief rat things? Or is that Mario 2? Are these... These appeared... Yeah, they, like, <laughs> this, this is kind of crazy that there's so much variety in each, uh, each stage. Like, not even Super Mario World did this. Physics checks out. Did I really have to make it all the... All right. Hopefully I didn't. Alright. Assuming I just keep heading right. 
as you do in Mario games. need stars so oh geez maybe I do Also for other backlog stuff. Now that I I sold my big TV, I have full use of my uh, my table now, so we can continue the uh, the steel battalion, the the hopeless endeavor of trying to beat steel battalion. <laughs> Because we're, we're pretty much back to square one with that game. And I think I only got like a fourth of the way through the game. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be... A lot left to do. Telling me this far into the game that you can destroy these walls with eggs. I learned that in stage one game. Assuming you're invincible while in Super Baby Mario. Okay. Why is it what? game just gives you tutorials all over the place. Which is nice. I'm glad they did that, but some of these just seem unnecessary.
that I'm trying to think of how far I've played through this game before. And I think the farthest I've ever gotten before is 1-4. <laughs> so this is everything past here, completely new to me. And I guess watching the speed run didn't didn't help me for this because they just speed through the levels. Okay. All right, that's on a timer, I'm assuming. Oh, God. Yo, the booze in this game are super happy. What the? <laughs> and they have tiny... Okay, that one has a much larger mouth, but... The small booze look very different from the other games. Something over here. Can't remember if there's a way to cancel the, um... Is there a way to cancel an egg throw? Spit out. Patient, easy. Yeah, it doesn't say anything in the menu. In the manual. I know you can hold down the the R button to uh to lock it in place. Jump off the stairs. Oh, you duck. Okay. Okay, this is this is back where we started. So I'm assuming you need to go underneath that staircase through here. Okay. Uh oh. Spectres. Oh, jeez. So also, for those of you joining us late, um, we started and finished, in quotes, finished Machine Head. It was an experience. Um, and so the, the next PS Explosion game is uh, Civilization 2, but the game after that is um, Vanguard Knights, I believe the title. Which, uh, looks to be a strategy RPG kind of thing. It, from the screenshots, it looks like Fire Emblem. Alright, this is, uh... I assume that's the gimmick here, is that you gotta... Ooh. 
No bat. This looks like a a Clefairy now. Okay. Very difficult boss fight. Well, the for Vanguard, uh, Vanguard, whatever it is, I I confuse it with the Vandal Hearts games. See that the, the the boo on the icon for the castle here? That looks way scarier than what it is in the game. <laughs> Watch out. For like it too. snake my oh jeez. <laughs> So I'm assuming this whole level is Lakitu taking the ground out from underneath your feet. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Eat him, or I could just run past him. <laughs> yeah, that works too, I guess. <laughs> just eat the cloud. GG. Oh. What, 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 what? Yeah, they're they're very slightly a different color. It probably comes across more in uh, with like quality video cables because I got this hooked up through um through RGB, or I guess on an emulator as well. That's a thing. Every single level has been a new... Oh, jeez. A maze. Can't wait. I hate these. Oh. Alright. Good hype for maze. Straight to the bottom. Do this. Okay. All right. Door 
yours can be in those two, apparently. Blended into the, the background there. Okay, so I need to get eventually get up there. So I'm gonna have to use the jump thing up above here. So those, I gotta get to those somehow. And it looks like I gotta get there by breaking that. it out. Wait, this is just a bonus, isn't it? But shit. I thought this is progress. Wait, this is the, um, the Super Mario 64 uh, flying theme, isn't it? Huh. Star theme? But well, it's, it's a little different from the star theme, though. Like this, this to me is very uniquely the uh, the flying theme. All right, so where do I go from here? Let me go back. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I guess those the markings on the floor were kind of the giveaway of there's something above. God, that's. And this is just that, so I gotta get over there somehow. Oh my god. Got hit twice by the same thing. Okay, so I can't go up from there. So it looks like I need to to take this up again and go right instead of over to the bonus house. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. Figured it out. For some reason, this, uh, the scenes like this in particular remind me of, um, Mario RPG. Probably because of the perspective. And how it's, like, kind of pre-rendered. And it also seems a little out of place with this game's art style. That was probably just a bonus thing. Got him. Only one card. Okay. <laughs> wow, great. Those all look like something that I wanted. It's big boy. Oh. Alright. Man, Lakitu is... More of a jerk than usual in this game. Okay. Boy, you can just walk on spikes. Okay. Oh, you can eat them too? Oh man, it gives you the... <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Yeah, the big chungus. Alright. And this level, you go left. Because Yoshi's Island has no time for convention. Yep, we got a heckin' chonker here. Oh. oh, Lordy coming. What? What is that? All right, flower. All right, I got a big egg here with your name on it, flower. Okay. That'll have to do for now. Okay, that's a pipe. Sure. Alright, another tutorial. Are you a good driver? It is easy. Use B to avoid your enemies. Alright. That's the jump button. Oh, okay. 
That isn't what I expected that to do, but okay. So why are we... Ah. That is a nice sound that that's making. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it sounds wrong. It, it, this is an original cart. Original cartridge hooked up through digital audio. So... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm not running this off uh, an SD to SNES or anything. Unless this is somehow a bootleg cart. But... I bought this after, um... After, uh... Super FX and SD1 were... Or whatever the... The chip is in this was figured out for, uh... SD to SNES. So I, I doubt this is a bootleg, but... I don't actually think I opened up this cartridge, come to think of it. I opened up my Star Fox cartridge. But I don't think I opened up this one. So who knows? It might be a bootleg. Somebody might have gotten the Japanese version of whatever that, that golf game is that everybody uses to cannibalize for the... The PCB. Because there's like just some random Japanese golf game that used the the same chip as as this in Star Fox. I think it's a Super Effects is what what those use. And then they just take it and flash the ROM for like this on the cart rather than whatever golf game was on it. So if you're gonna do something like that, just just make it an Earthbound cart <laughs> and make way, way more money off of it. Just go get Batman Forever or something. Flash Earthbound onto it, make a label, and then profit. But don't do that, because that is that is a scumbag thing to do. Don't do that. Oh. Okay. So if I were a key, where would I be? I suppose I could actually use the tutorial thing for once. What does this say? Oh. Maybe you gotta break the floor with that thing? Have a good one. Okay, must be back here if it lets me backtrack this way. Probably not up there. I guess I could always... Yep. Okay. What the hell? Alright. Mm -hmm. 
Why doesn't the bomb just blow up this thing? Save me the trouble. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> I oh my god. Okay. All right. All that before we even get to the boss. This has certainly gotten more difficult. I'm not going to say that this is like a super difficult game or anything, but... What? Oh, you got a... Interesting. I thought you had to hold down right trigger to get it to stop. Okay. All right, what boss will we get here? Bosses in maze, I guess. It's probably just a bonus room. Or it's... <laughs> the thorns. Okay. I'll probably just avoid them. Oh, jeez. in the walls. They're just... Just happened to pick the right flower pot, I guess. Oh, 
All right. What we got this time? Oh, giant flower pot. Okay. Oh, geez. Uh... I remember from the speedrun that this this boss is one of the ones that you could just beat immediately if you if you start the fight pushing right at the start or something. I think there's six, uh, six main worlds, so we're a third of the way through the game. So a third of the way through the game, only four deaths. I don't think we're going to reach 100. Pretty sure. Can eat the monkeys? I can't. clouds. this level at all from the speedrun. I could grab onto there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jungle rhythm. AKA the greatest rhythm game on the Sega Saturn. Oh. I should probably play through that one again now that I have a proper RGB setup with the, the Saturn. Uh oh, Poochie. So I'll have no excuse to to be bad at jungle rhythm now. And we can see the uh the secret final stage of that game. Yep, that game was a real trip. Yeah, I don't often replay games on stream that I've streamed before. But that one I feel probably going to be a good exception. Along with stuff with like like uh, Juggernaut. It sure would be nice if I had a working PSIO for whenever we do Juggernaut again. Otherwise, I'll have to burn four CDRs. I'd rather not. Even though it'll be for a good cause of, of playing Juggernaut again, but if I can avoid it, I'd love to. Oh god, seriously. <laughs> Perfect. trying to think of other Saturn games are even on the backlog still pretty much most of them. And I, I think that means I played maybe half of the, the games on Saturn that I've wanted to play. Okay, maybe not quite half. Maybe a third. But still, running out of Saturn games that I actually care about. <laughs> totally worth the... Oh... I think six, six or seven hundred dollars I've I put into the the Saturn setup and flashcards and all that. Still cheaper than than buying Saturn games. <laughs> Saturn games are ridiculous if you actually want to collect the the original discs for those, especially the U.S. ones. And luckily, there. Um, if if one of y'all wants to get into Saturn gaming and collecting, uh, there's actually a flash cart that somebody developed that's going to be more widely available than the the Ray and Phoebe are. 
because the the one that I have, which is a uh, a Rhea, uh, the guy in Poland that makes them, he only he only produces like twenty at a time, and only like twice a year. So they're super rare. And somebody else has uh, has figured out how to do the same thing, and is actually making them at scale for a reasonable price. Well, oh, here's the here's this guy. This is the guy from Twitter. Oh, okay. What the hell? Can I... Okay. I... Oh, jeez. Okay. Good. Didn't drown. Alright. Arrow's pointing left, so I'm assuming... I assumed wrong. I, uh... Stages that make you go left in this game are really, really messing with me. Like, it, it's unconscionable that you would have to go left to finish a level in a Mario game. But here we are. Okay. Great. Perfect. Seriously. Uh, I Come on, game. Are you doing? <laughs> All right. Try that again. It's like a pixel away. up there. I love this derpy Yoshi icon. <laughs> that is so far my favorite part of this game. What the hell? Okay. There's another unique enemy. This is... is this a a woolly crab or is it a crab making bubbles? Or is it a crab made out of bubbles? Some D pad problems here. My 8, eight bit dough controller. What? Dude! What a jerk. Mm -hmm. 
I did not know it did that. Frog. That's apparently the boss of this uh, Prince Froggy's Fort. Eh? Probably gonna need that key somewhere. And it's probably around here. Probably back here then. Seriously? Probably not the right way to go. Sure. Uh, the mazes and ghost houses are probably my least favorite part of uh, the Mario games. I'm actually come to think of it, the the farthest I've ever gotten in Mario 64 was, I think, to the ghost house. Probably a hidden thing over there. Let's double check. No, of course not. Of course not. Okay. 
Sure. There's probably a gimmick for for beating those things, but if that is. Don't know. Other than just hit them with three eggs. Whatever that is in the ceiling, I don't like it. Oh, it's just... Oh. I... Apparently, you keep sliding if you hold down the throw egg button. Well... Okay, hold up. You do. Interesting. I actually did not know that. So if you just let go of the button normally... Huh. Alright. Still learning. I knew that was going to happen like an instant before it did, and I could do nothing about it. Alright. Now we got a Death Mountain going, boys. <sighs> Alright, it's fine. We're still going to keep the deaths at single digits in this game. I can feel it. will be different. You couldn't just oh, I uh uh oh okay 
ね。Okay. <laughs> this is this is a neat gimmick. I guess you could just stand right in the middle. And this. Alright, that, that worked for most of the fight. Okay. Because it looked like the, the. the uvula or whatever dangling thing was knocking the. the drips aside. So if you just stood directly underneath it. It, it looked like you're safe most of the fight. Not like that was difficult or anything, but but still, you could make that easier, I guess. All right. Well, that was neat. Man, this game is very creative. I'll give it that. Jamming through the trees. It looks like there's something over there, but I guess not. So we got another... Oh man, frame rate. Alright, we might get... some frame rate readings for this, uh... this one. I just screwed this up. Wait, is that is that in uh in Kurubo shoe? Is that an official Kurubo shoe appearance in this game? To go with the whole two other times that Kurubo shoes appeared in Mario. Oh, shit. <sighs> yeah, whoever said that that pits account for most of the deaths in this game, absolutely correct. <laughs> I think every single death so far has been has been a pit. Oh yeah, to throw eggs at it. Yeah, you're right. I seem to remember that that uh, being a thing. Oh man, 
stage is really annoying. This stage is really annoying. <laughs> oh my god, especially that part. Holy crap. All right. Okay, I can't die anymore to keep keep this a uh, single digit death game. I'm sure I can do it. Make it past this screen. Maybe if I get whatever's over here first. Okay, that just did nothing. Alright, we did it. The nightmare's over. We don't have to do the beginning of the stage again. Unless I die 19 times. Are you shitting me? enemies. Oh, okay. This is fine. This is fine. This game's got some tricky parts to it, but that's for sure. And it's not like uh, Super Mario World 1, where you could just cape over everything. those have some sort of weird make you run thing. Alright, just gonna have to start throwing eggs at that part. Fucking hell. Fuck! Uh. <laughs> like, you could, you could tell where I got to this part in Death Mountain. Man. She it. Thank you. 
Yeah, the the special Star World. Oh fuck, I did it again. Wait, though. Okay, those take two hits? Three hits? Okay, let's go get some eggs, I guess. I guess that's why they give you that at the start. I need that. I need that. I need that <laughs> for once. way and I, and then I'm just back here again so I guess it was just this that I missed last time. Okay, that's... I was right at the end last time, and I... Uh... Shit. Amazing. Cave of Hairy Hedgehog. Alright, as long as there's no monkeys in that cave, then I'll be okay, I guess. Shit. Okay, good. These I can deal with. I'd rather not have to listen to these things, but... Oh, God. Okay. I don't remember those things from the speedrun either. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Probably not required to get to the end. Yeah, this is just for bonus stuff. What? I. Uh, what? I. Okay. What? I. Okay. Alright, let's never do that again. <laughs> Let's just go this way. Okay. 
Wasn't worried for a second there. Is this a death? I thought that was the exit. <laughs> Good thing I got that extra life in that area. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> oh, there's the key. Okay. Oh, the key to something. All right. Probably do need that key, I guess. to the, the far left part of the, the level now. Uh, I could probably just jump over all this. doesn't help me either. I've already been here. So it's like down... <sighs> not that way. Okay. Already... Already been over here. Hmm. Maybe... Oh! Maybe it's... 
Maybe it's this. To get that extra height. <clears throat> That doesn't seem right. Because you can just jump off of this. Okay, maybe it's bringing this over here? This doesn't quite seem right either, because that is just stuck now. Okay, well there's a... A bouncy ball thing over there. Also, it looks like you entered the screen from the left, so... Perhaps it is... From the screen to the left. Come on. Okay. Yep. Here. There we go. Sure. Puzzle solved. Wait. Wait a second. How am I going to get up there now? I think I need the rock over here. Oh, or just do this. That works too, I guess. Alright, please be the end of the level. Okay, good. Oh boy. Alright. More monkey levels. Can't wait till we're done with the monkey levels. challenge at all? Uh, you mean like going through the ring and getting uh, a chance for extra lives? Because I have. I've gotten that twice, I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's how you deal with the crab things. climb vines. Here she does not have long enough arms to climb vines. Okay. 
Are you sh- oh, Most of my difficulties in this have been just getting wrecked by the monkey enemies. Especially the ones that throw bombs. Because I've learned the hard way that... Even if I... I eat them, if they're holding a bomb while I eat them... It's, uh... It'll blow up and knock me off what whatever platform I was on. And usually killing me in the process. Oh, you can ground pound them too. I assume that you couldn't because they they got the the upward pincers. But that sounds a lot more effective. <laughs> a lot more effective than what I was oh jeez. an instant death. I think they're easy to avoid. Oh, is that a sequence break that I did? <laughs> or an intended one? Nice. I'll take it. Naval Piranha's Castle. You don't like this dungeon. Okay, so you can't. You can't do the flutter underneath the water. Okay. Yeah, th this level already looks like it's horrible. Can't wait. <laughs> uh. I'm gonna have to keep track of where I've been now. So that's that's clearly a one way one way avenue there. underneath. The game is still tutorializing fairly obvious things halfway through the game. <laughs> let's go in directly. Well, let's use an egg. Skip on the surface of the water? What? Oh, okay. Well, that's new, I guess. 
But I guess there hasn't been much water like this in levels. Where's the red, violet, the blue? Never forget what I say to you. Timing is all. And aim true. Measure the angle and win two. Okay. Assuming there's nothing up there. Oh, jeez. A haiku straight out of shivers, courtesy of Roberta. The... <laughs> I probably have to do a better job of skipping across the... do that. <laughs> that took me a little too long to realize I could just do that rather than trying to get fancy with it. So far, all the boss fights been great. Hopefully, this uh, this one's pretty good too. So I'd say that the boss fight's probably been some of the highlights of this one. To me, at least. Eh. Sure. 
Probably have to hit that thing in the bottom center of it. Clearly when it's vulnerable. times so you got to get like right in front of it in order to hit it apparently pattern.
Oh, you can just stand right. Oh shit. Okay. So it can't hit you when it. What? What? <laughs> I I don't get that at all. Maybe I'm supposed to go in the water when it does that? Huh. be nice if I could get more than two eggs per cycle, but can't have everything. Yeah, yeah I, I know I need to, I need to hit the, the little spot below it. It's just, for whatever reason, I can't get the, the angle correct on it. Shit. I managed to hit it once. How I did that, I'm not sure. Maybe I have to bounce it off the, the wall behind it? Or something? To get the angle correct? I guess I'll, I'll try that next time. I don't remember bouncing it off the wall to hit it, though. And especially the way that it's oriented on the boss. It looks like you can only hit it from the front. And if I throw it from, like, back here, it's just going to bounce up to the, the ceiling. Alright, at least I'm going to have five eggs to throw it at this time. from like right here. I wasn't even right under the boss this time. So I'm kind of baffled as to, as to how this works. Like I'm not sure if the, if the egg is bouncing off the, the floor or not. Could also just hold the hold the egg in place with the the trigger. I don't even need any more eggs. ever going to be vulnerable again? Uh... Okay, so looks like it... Yeah, so the eggs do bounce off of there. So I'm I'm still unsure as to how I was able to hit the boss before. Okay, and it looks like I, I have to hit it after it um after it recovers from the the wall hit. Huh. 
Uh. I'm probably making this way harder than it needs to be, but I'm sure I'll get there. We'll get there eventually. I'm not even sure when it's vulnerable now. Because the only other time I've been able to hit it is, uh... Like, I can't hit it in the back of the head. Maybe I have to go underwater? Oh, shit. Okay, alright. Saved it. fuck's sake. Alright, well, we finally got to see that screen, and now we get to do all that shit all over again. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Great. Great. Shit, it's... Could have sworn I got it that size before. Alright. This time, things will be different. This time, I won't screw it up. As much. At least I know how to do the first two hits now. Reliably. And I think, like, this part's supposed to teach you how to do the boss fight. But... Eh. I'm not gonna skip eggs off of the... the water here. Time, things will be different.
can it oh <laughs> so it is it is using the mechanic that the they told you about <laughs> I see. <laughs> I guess I should have just listened to that. <laughs> you, you know that, that one talking yellow box that, that said, hey, you can skip eggs off the surface of the water. And I said, yeah, I'll never do that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. Boy, do I feel like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <sighs> Amazing. Oh boy. But hey, I almost beat that boss by with the other method. Almost. Wait, does the music change depending on what... I don't recall the, the left channel audio being like that. Huh. You can completely skip the boss? Oh yeah, I seem to remember the speed... Speedrun did that, where you, you killed the boss at the beginning of the fight or something? Um, oh, it adds an instrument. Nice. Alright, Goomba appearances. Super Mario World 1 didn't have Goombas, right? It, it definitely had turtles, but I don't recall it having Goombas. Round Goombas? Huh. God, it, it's been so long, I just... I don't even remember. Alright, this, this has gone great. Okay, let's just... Soft. Galumba. Huh. Yeah, I don't remember at all. All I, I I do remember that if you if you clear the secret, the super secret world or something, it changes the the turtles into like a weird Mario faces or something. And in, until I started watching speedruns of of Mario World, I had no idea that uh, that super secret, special, cool, radical, whatever world even existed in uh, Mario World. Uh oh, got more fuzzies to touch here. Oh god. I never noticed that Yoshi's eyes turn. Turn or oh, fuck. All right, touching fuzzy, not a good idea in that level. I can't see the Gloomba behind it because it's covered by the the gif thing on, <laughs> on Discord. I'll take your word for it that there's a Goomba in that image. Uh, 
Discord is censoring that Galoomba. Yeah, it worked that time, but I can't see it. <laughs> It's there. Oh man. Touch a superstar and become powerful, Mario. This is super. Okay. We we've already seen this mechanic though in a previous level, but sure thing game. And it's powerful Mario, not Super Mario. Very specifically, not Super Mario. Seven, I'll take it. This looks like a monkey level. The cave of the lack of oh, even better. Even Not invited to that party. begins to fall after hovering, press B again to hover some more. Use this technique in the magnifying glass? Why do I need a magnifying glass? Also, I have Mr. Red Coin. Red. What does a magnifying glass have to do with anything? Maybe they they intend for you to use a magnifying glass to tell which coins are the red coins, even though it's very obvious if you're using RGB cables. Oh, these red coins. Well, you don't need that. Just use RGB. Because even on my CRT, like, it, it's pretty obvious which ones are red.
Like this. This one, this one is a red coin. So compare that one to the, the one next to it. Like this one. This one won't I get it. Yeah, red coin. And this one regular. And then this one is red. Like, <laughs> it's pretty plain to me. RF adapter? Nice. I think that's what I used to. I think I used RF with, with up to PS1, I want to say. Though, to be fair, for, for some platforms, composite and RF are, like, the proper way to... Um... Uh, to show what the games were intended to look like. It's mostly for... Um... Like, old PCs. And stuff from the... The early 80s. To, to late 80s. Because you can, uh... You can create more colors than the systems were capable of showing. By, um... By taking advantage of the really crappy and blurry signal that uh, if you put two two colors right next to each other, pixel-wise, they would actually blend together and create a third color. So if you only had 16 colors to work with, you could actually have 32 colors by extension of that, by making use of, um, of that technique. Okay. Alright. We'll go with whatever luck gets us here. All right, we got whatever that is. Okay. I guess that's a pause menu item. Crayola level technology. Yep. Well, it, it's the same way that the... Uh, um, uh, like waterfalls in, in Sonic the Hedgehog 1. This I already learned earlier in the game. Come on, game. Platform will disappear. But yeah, it's one of the reasons why why people say I oh jeez. Um to say not to get like really high quality RGB cables for Genesis slash Mega Drive is because you don't you don't see waterfalls properly. Because it, it looks too good. Which, sure, there's there's an argument to be made for that, but it makes everything else look so good that I don't really care how good the waterfalls look. <laughs> and I don't know how I saved that, but I did. <laughs> Speaking of Galaxy Brain, that save there. Shitty TV filters? Yeah, well, th that's pretty much why. Perfect. Perfect. Nailed it. Alright. Hopefully those respawn. If not, then I'm going to the pipe. Alright, going to the pipe. Take my L there. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You can tell on the graph exactly where we got to the uh, the monkey stage. Uh 
So, frame rate. Original hardware coming through. What? Okay, that that makes the the timer go faster. Shit. Alright, this part is officially horrible. And I don't have any eggs. Perfect. These cannons seem to, to fire a lot sooner than the, the earlier Mario cannons did. So sure, sure they give warning, but what good is it? I, uh... Has anybody played the N64 Yoshi game? Because I think I tried to play that once and I just couldn't understand how that game even. Because it, it, it's like collecting fruit or something. It was short. Short, and he hated it. Really abstract. Okay. Sounds like a winner then. We'll have to play it. <laughs> I know at least one person that swears by it and loves it. But that's it. Only one person. <laughs> Well, if it's super short, then might as well. I got all this other stuff on the backlog. Oh, sh I. Oh, how did I not? Okay. All right. I'm okay with this. Oh, God. That's why. expecting that. I thought this was level level two all over again.
Oh, frame rate. Okay. eggs on the left over there. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh-oh. This... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. But now... <laughs> I lost my ride. Uh, okay. need to come here? <laughs> uh, I guess this is the next question. Was this even a required thing? Because I'm not going for points. I just want to beat the levels. <laughs> Alright, can I take Kuribo shoe? I cannot. last great Yoshi game. I've heard good things about the what was it, the, the yarn ones? Yarn one recently? I think they made two of those. Oh no, they made a Kirby yarn game and then a Yoshi one. Maybe it's the Kirby one that I've heard the most good things about. And not the, the Yoshi one. I don't know. I haven't played any of them. I do have them. Or I have the the Kirby one. Oh, there are two of them. Yeah, Yoshi's Woolly World and then Yoshi's uh, crafted one. The only good Yoshi game. Wow. What about Yoshi's Safari? Huh? Are you disrespecting the Yoshi's Safari or the the Super Scope? Or is it Mario's party? Because that one was a banger. I don't have a super scope. Otherwise, I would play that and the other, like, exclusive. Get through there! I guess I can I can check Goodwill for a super scope at some point. And then modify it for not using. Are you? <laughs> okay, fine. Fine game. I'll do that. Shoot up the site. Nice. I wonder if that uh, if that universal LCD light gun that's being developed has uh, super soap. Or has a super scope planned for it. Because that would be nice if I didn't have to use a first party super scope. Because I don't want to... <laughs> I have enough enormous dumb light gun accessories that I really don't want to have to get this enormous bazooka thing as well. Like I have the, um, the PS3 uh, move thing, which is like a full ass combat rifle attachment that you put a move controller into. <laughs> and I already have one of those. I don't need another thing like that.
Where it came in from? Did I just? Oh god! I just. Oh no! Oh no! I made a horrible mistake. <laughs> well, I guess we're doing all that again, unless I needed what whatever was. Nope. Okay. Well, I got those out of it, I guess. <sighs> Load the controller. Yes, you do actually. I forget what the name of it is. Uh, but yeah, um, you put uh, you put the move controller in the front of it, and then there's also a move um, like a nunchuck, kind of like the Wii has a nunchuck. It has that same thing, and you actually put it in the front of it. So you you hold it. It's like this big, uh, and you hold it like that. The Wii the controller the with the, the ball on it goes in the front and then you put the nunchuck thing in there and it's it's got like a folding stock and rails on it. It's it's absurd. <laughs> it's super dumb, but I love it. With the vibrating machine guns, that's uh that's crisis zone, I believe. No, the, the, the real weird light gun game that I'd like to be able to play one day is um, Konami made a arcade light gun game called Police 911. Um, or at least that was the Western title for it. That was actually had a motion tracking camera in it that you would physically move your body to dodge and go behind cover in the game. Which, uh, where am I going here? And there's actually a PS2 port of it that, that has a camera attachment uh, or a camera that you hook up to your PS2 to play the game with the motion. Oh, shit. I, uh, okay. Good. And, and it's different from an eye toy. It's like an IR camera that you hook up to your PS2. And then you can also use like a uh, a gun con <clears throat> gun con to uh, to do the actual shooting. But you need this special infrared camera that only works with this one game. <laughs> All right. I'm assuming the key door is through here. Apparently there's another key. Oh man. Okay, which which doors did I go in? I didn't go in the bottom left or the top right. Ugh. Yeah, top right. I didn't go in the lava room either. All right. Or I'm assuming the lava room, the the one with the lava b below it. Wait, this one? There's a key here. I I didn't even realize there's a key in here that I I missed. Was it, was it in here somehow? One of each, huh? I I honestly don't even know where the key would be here. Okay, I'll take a 
free one up. Behind the spikes? What spikes? Great. Just when I wanted the, the bandit guy to follow me. Oh, down there. Okay. I actually didn't even see that uh, when we came through here. Also just realized I can do that. God. level wait you, you can kill those guys oh you just I was under the impression those guys were invincible I'll be damned Crisis averted. All right. Now we can get stuck on the boss. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, oh, bottom left and, uh, good thing there's no timer on this in this game. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, <sighs> all right, I'll take it. No way. Where's this audio noise coming from now? Game is getting very upset. What? What? I, okay. This has got to be that weird audio mod. All right, hold up. Uh, let's do 
this and just go back to start audio. If the audio is going to be doing that. All right. Regular old basic bitch analog audio. <laughs> All right, that is that's my favorite enemy right there. It reminds me of uh uh Oscar the Grouch. Eh? All right. This time we have all the keys. Certainly. Wait, shit. I have to do all those other rooms now. <laughs> oh my god, okay. I thought it would have at least saved some of my progress. Uh, okay. Alright, alright. So we did... We did bottom left, so now we gotta do this one again. in there? I hope not. Because I do not want to do that one again. are a lot easier to deal with now that I can just ground pound. Thank <laughs> you. 
level. This level is killing me. Blame this on Machine Head. It made me so motion sick when we were playing it. That's throwing off my platforming. actually harder than Dark Souls. Who'd have thought? Oh, man. Yep. Commander Keen's on the backlog, by the way. One through six, and the best one, Keen Dreams. Because I, I think the... The one, the only keen game that I've ever beaten is, uh, one. The shareware of one. And I never had, uh, two and three, because why would you pay for software when shareware existed? And... Four, I don't think I ever beat. And five and six, same thing. Why would you pay for software? Why is this? Okay. And then Dreams. Dreams is too difficult. So that's why I never beat Dreams. Okay, one key down. Too many left. All right, now we gotta get through this without dying. Uh, okay. What? I. Uh, okay. Apparently, the bucket protects you from those. 
After that, or I, I'm just getting insanely lucky with hitboxes. Two of our keys here. And then the last one is. Bottom right? I guess. Oh, unless. Okay. Oh, man. So where did bottom left? That's the lava one. Bottom right was the spikes? And we, we did that. This one I haven't done yet. Wait, this one I did do. getting a key from this one. This was like up here. for this this place better be like the easiest boss in the game because if you die to that boss and have to do all this shit again then then come on box off of the off of here maybe by by butt stomping the box it it broke the key or something or it's just... 
Well, there's no key here, and I'm just... I'm just getting ultra debated. Because I am, I am so confused right now. Uh, this is why I hate levels like this. <laughs> okay. Alright. I'm assuming that there's nothing there. And... We... Did do this? I can't remember anymore. This is all blurring together. I honestly cannot remember if we got the key from this room. Okay, there's still two of those over there, so... I'm assuming one of those has the key. level. Just, just fuck this level. Come on. <laughs> just give me a checkpoint halfway through this. Shit. I don't think it saved any keys. It hasn't so far. Because I, I hit the checkpoint circle right when I got to this area. So I don't know why it would have saved any of the keys. Oh, man. <laughs> Getting a, a newfound appreciation for the the speed run for this game after playing this. And how tight the the margin for error can be in this one. What are you sh oh god. What? Oh, I was I was clicked out of the death tracker. Shit. My bad. We missed like twenty minutes. And that would I was clicked out of it because I was in the the mixer for um, changing the audio to analog. Whoops. Thank you for pointing it out. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, th this game is cutesy, but it's also brutal. <laughs> uh. Okay, so th that one up there, I'm assuming there's no key. the bottom right one that still needs to be done. Oh, man. Hey, JG. All right. I just managed to not die. So the, the bottom right one. And I don't think there's even any hazards in the, the bottom right one. Actually, there is. I did, I did manage to die here. I just need to land in the right spot so I don't land on the spikes. Should be it. We just need to make it out of here alive. Don't die to something dumb. Like falling in that spike pit. Okay. Alright. Alright. Now I need to not die to the boss. Assuming there's no more keys. I, I guess I'm making that assumption that this is the last key. <laughs> and we'll find out shortly, I guess. Also, don't die here. Okay. All right. Come on, game. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Good. Thank you, game. You did one one nice thing. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Never been happier to see a checkpoint ring in a game. Okay. Marching Milda. Hound YouTube bits. This one, I probably have to bounce an egg off the wall. Mm. Or just do that. 
the halfway halfway mark of that uh, that one okay all right so we're we're a bit past the the halfway point of the game so we will finish this up in the next time i sit down with this one so i'll cut the timer here all right so that'll that'll do it for tonight um so reminder uh we started and, and finished Machine Head. Um, that game was below average, but it wasn't terrible. Um, the The next piece explosion game is Civilization 2. And then the game after that is... Was it Van... Vanguard? Vanguard Bandits is the game after that. Which we have, we have Robo Pope here, giant robot Pope, and then it's like this Fire Emblem type game. It looks like, and it's it's extremely anime. Like this, <laughs> this, this is all you need to know. And it's also a working designs game, so expect expect some amazing localization, I guess. Uh. But that one will be after Civilization 2, which is probably not going to be short, because you know, you know how that usually goes, right? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a poll in the in the Discord for what our um, our faction is going to be for Civilization 2, because there's like 20 choices. Um, so I'll leave it up to y'all to uh, to make the choice there on what. Um, what our faction is going to be. There's a whole bunch of choices. Uh, and I... doesn't matter to me what we choose. Um, so I'll leave that up to y'all. I'll put that in the, uh, the the special channel for Civilization 2. It's in the the spoiler discussion section of the, the channels on my Discord server. Um, for that. And yeah. So uh, next, next stream, which will likely be tomorrow... Because uh, I gotta, I gotta make up for a, a week plus of no streams. Um, uh, we'll start our Civilization Two playthrough and then probably finish uh, Yoshi's Island. So that uh, that should be the plan for the next time. All right. So as always, thank you for watching. Take care. Hope you all have a great day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.